nerds! <laughs> <laughs> nice one. Well done. Hello. 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 <laughs> hello. This is very different. <laughs> So many nerds, how's it going? So many nerds, this is incredible. Um, thank you everybody um, who's popping in today. Yeah, and thank you so much. The the GoDot team, I mean, the, the, I mean the, 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 the Go, Go Dot, yeah. Yeah. What, what's that, how's it pronounced? The Go and the Dot. Yeah. <laughs> go Dot Dot. How's it going? How's it going? Um, do we need do we need introductions? I guess so. That is so typical. <laughs> <laughs> it is the Godot takeover. The nerds are taking over today. Uh, hello oh. everyone. We're two nerdy nerds. Hello. I'm Bernardo. I do the the Godoing. Yeah, I'm Celine. I do all the art. Mm -hmm. On the on the chat, I am artiste nerd. So if you see me throwing some emotes in there, that's me. <laughs> How's it going? Dagger, Temptic, Goob, Guest. It's so good to see some of the nerds here today. Yeah. Thank you guys for coming in. Robotech, Practical. And yeah, we're, today I will not be saying thank you um, for the farts. Yeah. Uh, to anyone who <laughs> who's Fun disappointed enough, by that, I I'm sorry. <laughs> even, though, even though there's so many more nerds here today, it's, it's probably going to be more chill than our usual streams. <laughs> yeah, like actually. <laughs> and we also cannot forget that we have a Makuku. Yes. She's off screen right now, but mm -hmm. I'm sure she'll make an appearance. Oh, yeah. Uh, so anyone who likes cats. Sh should we open with, with a treat? Keep an eye out. Should we open with a we maca treat? Who wants a maca treat? Yeah. Some treats, maca? Collecting streams <laughs> 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 like Pokemon. The third team member. I saw Aramis in there, Charles. Yeah, Goob. How's it going? Bernardo sounds like he's in an auditorium. <laughs> am I? Am I echoing? I'm probably just speaking too loudly. <laughs> Ooh, welcome to the Makuku. Can you see her? Look at this sweet baby. No point. No redeems. Yeah. Today's gonna be pretty chill. I think. We will still do some maca treat redeems throughout, mm -hmm. just so that you know people can, can see the the cuteness of the maca. <laughs> Kitty, gummy wummy worm, how's it going? <laughs> Psychedelic Kit kitten, perfect. Hello, hello. Exactly. Yeah. So here you see this this beautiful this beautiful bean. Right here. This is the yeah. real reason why we're making a game. Yeah. Which is this one, right here. <laughs> See that? <laughs> we basically made a, a, a cat cafe game just so we could immortalize. Just so that I, we could put Maka in the game. Yeah. That was that was really That's it. That's the whole reason. <laughs> so yeah, we're going to be hanging out here today, uh, chatting about our game dev journey, uh, showing off our game. Please like the imposter syndrome is definitely kicking in yeah so there's there's no stupid question here just yeah. shoot anything uh you want to talk about uh do it i don't claim to be an expert but we are doing the thing that's the important part we're doing the thing we are making a game we're releasing the game yeah we this will be our first commercial um game project we mm -hmm. are like complete like noobs to the game dev scene yeah it's actually really. releasing a game right yeah yeah so yeah feel free to um ask any questions about our process about how how we managed to even get this far at the moment we have a demo we have yeah. some sticky notes for a release plan and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and a dream <laughs> yep um you have become good <laughs> Wait, let me just see if I do... None of us know what we're doing. You're both crushing it. Thank you. <laughs> no imposters. Can I do this? <laughs> nice. Okay, now we're good. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the whole soundboard. Silly, hey, hello. Hey, silly, hello. How's it going, Saw? Let's let's get into it then. Let's so get this is it. In. We're going into the Godots. This is our game. 
Super Cat Cafe Sandwich Rush. Um, it is a pretty simple game, and that is by design. And that's part of what we're going to chat about today. Uh, is given that this is our first commercial project, we were very intent on keeping the scope small um, and getting this thing released, which is a it's quite the hurdle <laughs> to do it yeah. first time around. Uh, at least for us, it was. Um, so, yeah. Uh, and just to answer your question, um, Dragonator, about um, what have I been using to create the art? Is it also open source software? I'm just going to type an answer in the chat as well in case you can't understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying. But I've been using uh, just an old iPad 11 Pro. Good old iPad here. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been using uh, this app called Pixaki. I did, there is a, a, like a free, sort of free version, but after I kind of tried that out and liked it, I purchased the full version, which lets you use like, you know, typical more layers, more files, more folders, etc. So that's what I use to make all the sprites that you see and all the art that you see in the game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm just gonna type that in chat as well for you. How's it going, Rodri? Strudel asks, is it 3D? Uh, looks like 2D or purely 2D. Uh, the game is purely 2D, yes. Um, I think we're both very excited to for our next project to explore uh, 3D or like 2.5D. Oh, I would love that. Yeah. I would love that. But for this project, we stuck to 2D to keep it as simple as possible. Yeah. And um, Cubemeister is asking, do we each have a professional background in art and programming? Or are they completely new fields to you? So I have been like... <laughs> Illustrating, you know, just for funsies Wait. after school since I was a kid. I, what's happening? <laughs> How did that sound play? <laughs> the the la the kecks are, are kecking. <laughs> I think I think someone Wait. went to our channel and did things. <laughs> <laughs> I know those that beaks with a raid. <laughs> Beeks, how's it going? Beeks, I almost didn't recognize you with your custom sound alert. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, yeah, so I was saying that I've I've been drawing since like forever, like just drawing for fun, not pixel art really. Uh, I then did um, study graphic design at a university, and I do work for a brand design agency on my full time job. Uh, I do web development for work and have been for about eight years. <laughs> How does that work? <laughs> oh think, my goodness. I think they're just going to our channel and redeeming stuff. <laughs> oh gosh, I love that. Um, you guys are awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I've been doing web development for about eight years uh, and that's been all JavaScript programming. Um, which I, I think has some parallels to GD script. Um, it, it was super easy for me to pick up GD script, which was great. Um, yeah. So I've been programming for a while. Nice. Uh, Mr. Delicate was saying that their issue was getting a project off the ground is art. When we went mm. into it, did you initially go in with an art first mentality or mechanics first and use placeholder art until later in development? Hope this question makes sense. Absolutely. It makes perfect sense. And in fact, if I actually go to our game project, I had a hard time convincing our, our Bernardo here to even make this game. Yeah. So this is the game that I wanted. But I can't make the game. I can only draw the game. So in my hopes of convincing him to make this game with me, I drew this little, what you're seeing right here. Um, and I kind of showed it to him. It's like, look, it would look so cute. Like, <laughs> it would be so good. Like, trust me. Yeah. And he said, you know what? It doesn't look so bad. So, you know, we got, you know, gave me some feedback, but we kind of like, started based from like I, I would say like co concept art you could call it yeah. in a sense yeah um, it, it, it's it's slightly different if you are in like a, a solo dev environment it you know you have to sacrifice art and make sure the the gameplay is designed well first and that the game is fun but because Celine can't do the programming side 
she can take her time to explore the visual side of it while I work on the prototyping, right? Yeah. Um, so it was a bit of both in our case specifically. And so you basically started with just this little this little girl. Um, this was our OG barista, mm -hmm. um, and then you just used some some good old rectangles to start making the game. Just just some pink rectangles. Yeah, That's I can all. actually let me pull up the the video here. <laughs> Done the other asset. <laughs> Let me pull up the the video. I have it here somewhere. <laughs> here we go. So this this is how it started. <laughs> this was it. That was the game. Th this was my first week of, of working with Godot. <laughs> this was the this was the proof of concept of like we just yeah. need ing we just need ingredients to fall off the ceiling and then you gotta catch them, and then we were gonna go from there. <laughs> now I guess you get to decide if, if we improved it or not. Uh, yeah, I think it's the, the 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 jury's still up on that one. <laughs> uh, but right now it looks like this. <laughs> like, the, the poor girl didn't even have legs. She was just a torso. <laughs> So, I, and again, your question for how many individual drawings are needed. So we, we always want to keep um, our game as small as possible and, and just make it work. Mm -hmm. And then we expand and grow from there. So even though I've now got like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like eight different sprites for our main character, we started with just one. Yeah. We started with just the idol, which is just her standing and like her head bobs. That's all. Oh, she she's bobbing Poor. way too quick now. But <laughs> <laughs> she's excited. She's, she's excited. very excited. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we we started with just this. Yeah. She and then, she couldn't even put the platter down. Yeah. So she was just yeah. sliding back and forth, and then but it didn't matter because yeah. you know you were trying to make the game. I was just. Again, working on the sprite. So then, you know, first she was just holding her arms up the entire time, yeah. this poor woman, until I then made an <laughs> idol with her hands, like, resting. Mm -hmm. um, we then said, you then said, oh, she's got to run. She's got to, she's got to run. You can't, she can't just slide around. So then we made this running animation, um, which is also used for the jumping. Yeah. Because it just happy accident it yeah looked, it just it works looked, it, it, looked it, it looks like she's skipping yeah and so, then, yeah it works fine so it works fine it worked all right and then yeah ben how's it going mr zombie hello buddy beguile hello Sky driver how's it going <laughs> <laughs> you gave her legs that is kind <laughs> yes we gave her some legs <laughs> the person can do the art, the uh, the assets, and the programming. You're basically a portable team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I think that that I think our our skill sets just were, you know, perfectly yeah. complementing each other. So the division of labor is very much like, you make the game, I draw the and, assets. And that's very much how it started, right? Yeah. Like we we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this is this, the game idea was my idea, not Bernardo's game idea. I mean, if you had to throw a wild guess. <laughs> yeah, it, it, I would not consider this my type of game. But, yeah. Um, yeah, we didn't start making games and then we... How, how do I put this? We weren't making games before we joined forces, right? Yeah. It was... Um, uh, we realized that our skills complemented each other really well uh, and went into game development because of that, right? Yeah. So from the get-go, uh, there was always that dynamic of Celine just working on the art and me doing the programming. Uh, we both had to learn a fair bit. Um, Celine had to learn pixel art, had to learn animation. Yeah. Uh, and I had to learn a game engine. A whole the, game the, the Godoskis, yeah. the Godots. And and then for asking about the cat animations, again, we started with just one cat, which is our cat, Maka. Mm -hmm. And every, I think at the moment, we have 13 different cat animation sprites. Some of them ranging from two frames, two frames, 
Some of them are four, some of them are seven, some of them are... The longest one is 16 frames. <laughs> um, and then I just kind of used that bo that cat body to create the other cats by just recoloring them, which in and of itself still takes a really long time to mm. do. Uh, at the moment, we have got eight cats ready to go into the full game. Yeah. The demo only has access to three. Yep. Right? Yeah. Oh. And uh, the the ultimate goal is to hopefully get to 10 at some point. Yes. Uh, but we'll see about that we'll because about the, that. the release date is coming fast. <laughs> <laughs> Demo? <laughs> uh, any tips on learning pixel art and animation for beginners? Honestly, just do it. <laughs> mm. uh, I, like I said, I had no animation experience. So I started very small and very basic. Uh, I didn't start with like like our, our main character. She I would say she's incredibly complex. Like I I um the first uh, sprites I made were like quite small. We were trying to keep them like thirty two by thirty two the the, the yep. character sprites yep. um, and just watched a lot of like resources and videos i'm sure a lot of you know um adam Jonas. like i think i just binge watched their youtube channel mm -hmm. and i mm -hmm. just like did their lessons and i and i slowly learned and then yeah you just do it and you know i think the key is to just don't be afraid of doing something that you don't like or doing something that is wrong because from everything that you do wrong you learn from it so you know, you can always delete it and it'll, it's like it never existed. No one saw it. It's fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like you can always do something. It's horrible. And you just like, oh, goodbye. That didn't happen. Let's try again. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be fine. Digital <laughs> Iliad. Hello. Hello. How much does the demo cost? <laughs> the demo is free, you guys. <laughs> uh, Digital, congratulations on your Game Jam submission. Well done. It looks really good. Good job. <clears throat> Children's <Three>. of Adam. <laughs> <laughs> 300 bits. <laughs> no. Adam is seriously talented. He does literally, yeah, literally everything. Yeah. I learned so much. I want to change the, the name to Last Second Delivery. <laughs> that was insane. You're insane. <laughs> but good job. <laughs> Demo is free, but you have to pay for more than three cats. DLC confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> no current plans for DLC, although we would absolutely love to do seasonal updates. Yeah, I think not, not DLC, but updates with yeah. stuff. Like um, Valentine's Day update, uh, a fall, like Halloween update, a Christmas update. Uh, could be very cool because um, we have these decoration systems we've implemented, so you can change the the look of the cafe. Um, so we could very easily put in a bunch of decorations for, for those seasons, which would be quite cool. Yeah. And I mean, just all the cat hats. Yeah. Think of all the cat hats and all the cat backpacks and things that you could do. Updates <laughs> that <laughs> cost money, gotcha. <laughs> Bear like lion, hello. It says I love the idea of holiday themed updates. Decoration system looks great. Nice, yeah. How's and we bear? we um, revamped the decoration system a little bit with the introduction of coupons. Yes. Yeah, we got some coupons happening. Yeah. Some some tough game design decision, decisions to make there. Booyah, hello. What time is it over there? <laughs> Isn't it super late there? Maybe it's super early. I don't know. <laughs> you know what? I discovered the symmetry tool the other day and I'm like, oh my God. That sounds like really useful. That is really useful. <laughs> I've been I've been working with this app for a year and I've just not discovered this tool. <laughs> Amazing. 11.30 going to bed. Fair enough. Thank Fair you so much enough. for stopping by. Thank Leo. you so much. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, in our game, we have this little sp splash screen uh, with our logo. And today, we're going we're going to add a little little Godot spice. 
so this animation plays, reveals our logo, and then a, a made with Godot message shows below. So we're gonna change it so that when that message comes in, our logo switches out for uh, Godot's uh, little little robot. Robot. Which uh, Selena is drawing for us. Ah, uh, no, don't expose me. <laughs> trust, no! Trust the process. No, don't expose <laughs> me. It's not ready. Not like this. Yeah. <laughs> and a coder. <laughs> and a coder is just hogging that Keck W redeemed. The Keck. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, so yeah, this this is not our first game project. We actually we worked on our very first game. Bernardo and... has chosen violin. <laughs> And that was in uh, Game Maker when we initially started our game dev journey. And we went pretty far, but eventually we got burned out. Burnt out due to scope creep. Oh, yeah, like just we over scoped the game. Yeah, it was just way too complicated. Uh, and then we worked on, I want to say, a couple other projects, at least two that never saw the light of day again. Just. What I believe to be the the biggest enemy for uh, beginner game devs, and that is motivation, right? Yeah. Uh, Especially beginner um, game devs that you know, like us, have to work a full time job. Yeah, yeah. Very much a hobby, right? Yeah. Um, and I think it was with this game that we put our foot down and we really discussed on. How are we going to actually make a game from start to finish? And we landed on this uh, philosophy that, again, given our current skill set, you have to come up with a very, very simple game loop, implement that as soon as possible, and then never break that game loop for more than a couple days, right? If yeah. you end up with three, four, five days in a row where you have broken your game loop to implement some feature, there's probably a high chance that that feature is currently way too complicated and you're not feeling any sense of progress as you're implementing these features. Um, and that's kind of the game that we designed here. We have a very, very simple gameplay loop when it comes to the the, the core gameplay here of stacking sandwiches. The ingredients are falling from above. Um, there is a lore reason for that. It, it totally makes sense, I promise. There uh, is a very <laughs> good reason for that, yeah. Um, so this we started this as our base, and then we just went from there. So, for example, we added this little, little power-up that just makes it so more ingredients fall. Um, we added the cats. We added the... Uh, decoration system, but in their in their own little pocket, they're all fairly simple, and the game was never broken for I want to say anything more than three days because yeah. I had to like refactor something to to enable a new feature, for example. Hi, Lance. Yeah. How's it going? Happy Tuesday for <laughs> Daniel says Scope Creep is the final boss. It is indeed. It is, it is indeed. Yes. How's it going, Daniel? Um, how's it going, Spoo, as well? What up, nerds? Hello, hello. I'm being attacked. I'm being mauled. It is way too early for Violencia. Maka, <laughs> Maka has decided it is time for Violencia and that I cannot rest. I, how dare I rest my elbow on my desk? <laughs> <laughs> what is she can doing? You, can you see the little paw like, they, clinging, they cannot, clinging they to my see. arm? No? It's okay. not in frame. Can we do a cheeky Maka cam? <laughs> oh. can, you, can you see what's happening here? <laughs> Spoo, hello, hello. Look at this. How dare I try to use my desk. 
Never breaking the build is my North Star to stay motivated, motivated nowadays. Great advice. Yeah. Oh, don't try to be cute now. You were attacking my elbow. And it, it's all about... It's all about context, right? Uh, in the sense that you have to be aware of your own capabilities and your own state of mind and your motivation to know how far you can take a game idea, right? There's nothing wrong with complicated games. I'm sure we all love our share of very complicated games, but likelihood is that those games were developed by a whole lot of people. So if you're doing it by yourself, you have to be sure that, that you can take on that, that amount of... Um, I don't want to call it stress, but but that workload, you need to ensure that you can do that, or mm -hmm. else you're just going to have a, a a graveyard of unfinished projects, like we had until we we found our groove here. Yeah. The cutest aggressor ever. <laughs> Lori says my cat does the same if I code too much. Yeah, I mean mm. I feel like Maka knows when we're streaming. And she really gets the the itch to sit right in front of, like, on my keyboard, <laughs> on my mouse, and just not let me draw. She does not want me to draw. She just wants attention. I understand, you know. How, how dare I stop giving her attention. <laughs> okay. She's adorable. <laughs> Am I seeing two nerds here? How's it going? <laughs> two no we are two whole nerds here. <laughs> How's it going? Thanks, <laughs> off. It's feeding time for Maka and Queen Maka needs feeding. <laughs> she just she, had she, had, she had a little treat at the beginning yeah. of the stream, so I'm gonna wait a little mm -hmm. bit longer. Mm -hmm. Maybe maybe after the hour, we can give her another treat. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If she stops mauling my elbow, <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> and yeah, we we started. We started our game dev journey in Game Maker. Yeah. But after a while, I wanted to saw, to try something new, and I found uh, Godot, and it was very much love at first sight. Ever since we started using it, uh, I don't know. I, I found this this the very first instance where I feel like I could implement anything we could come up with in the game. Which, if you've not experienced that. It's gonna blow your mind because it it's awesome. It's gonna <laughs> blow your right? mind. Because for for the majority of of that time, the decisions I made when it came to game design Do we were just say limited. We're a bit limited. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd be like, no, let's not do that. Let's do this one tenth of that idea because that's what I feel comfortable doing. Um, but I don't know. With Godot, after like a month or so, something just clicked, and I'm like. No, I'm pretty sure we can do anything we come up with. If anything, let's let's scale it back <laughs> to keep the the scope in check. <laughs> First time seeing you guys. Love the team dynamic. Thank you. Yeah. How's it going, Malice? Hope you're having a good day. You've removed my power. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be, it's gonna be quite quite chill compared to our normal streams here. <laughs> oh yeah. This is so, so relaxed. If anyone that doesn't, has never experienced one of our streams, if you see something in chat about <clears throat> farts or anything like that, <laughs> just, just ignore it. These just crazy chatters. You know how Twitch chat gets it, you know. <laughs> it's utter <laughs> chaos usually. <laughs> there is definitely a healthy amount of chaos going on, that's for sure. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> nice. Love to see it. So yeah, if you have any questions at all about uh, what we're doing, about what Celine's drawing, uh, about our game here, uh, any particular feature that you're wondering how it's implemented, please feel free to shout. Um, and yeah, other than that, we're just gonna do a couple small tasks. Uh, we're going to make use of some custom resources to add some new content to the game. And then we're going to get Celine's Godot uh, art into our splash screen. Yeah. Should be fun. 
It should. It might take me longer than I anticipated. That's okay. We got time. We got time. I'm trying to make make. Do and are, good, are we going full color? I'm trying to do a good job here. <laughs> are we going full color or or just white? You know what I mean? Oh, I was going to go full color, but it might work. Yeah. So I got I got the scene here. Uh, I mean, the blue might work just fine. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get the actual blue because I just grabbed the random blue just mm. to block things in. Although maybe the icon in our colors might also be interesting. I don't know if that works, but something to explore. Hmm. It might take me longer than I anticipated game time in one Sunday. <laughs> true. Very true. Beeks says, sir, I have a question, sir. Go for it, Beeks. What's up? Also, how's your Godot game going, Beeks? Will this be like your regular streams or will this be family friendly? <laughs> Our streams are family friendly. Our streams are very wholesome. The only time we skirt the line between family friendly is when you pop in and chat, Beeks, so. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> The accusations. <laughs> <laughs> it surely can't be that hard to implement. Famous last words. The slander. <laughs> <laughs> Goob says the streams are very family friendly, except for when I'm involved. Mm, I have mm, made both mm. nerds curse. True. <laughs> <laughs> Right, so in our game, we have this concept of um, upgrades. This is where you kind of grow your cafe, add new ingredients, um, like up your stats, uh, unlock new mechanics. So for example, a small plant increases the customer patience, so they're willing to wait a bit more for their sandwiches, uh, or you can just add some lettuce to your ingredients. Um, some some knives, some more ingredients, some, <laughs> some, some condiments. <laughs> yeah, just, just just a yeah. knife. You can buy a knife. <laughs> you can yeah. do that. Um, yeah, so we're going to be adding, hopefully, a couple of those today. And this is possible uh, through through the wonderful use of custom resources. Ooh. I absolutely love custom resources. And if you've not unlocked that potential in Godot, I highly recommend you check it out. There's a ton of awesome tutorials on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, I, I turn everything into custom resources nowadays because it just makes it so much easier to, to replicate. So in this example, we have you know, we're gonna have dozens of different items. It's super easy to make new ones. And even when it's not something you're going to replicate a bunch. Uh, so for example, um, wait, in this project, do I have anything like that? Maybe not. But imagine you have a, a set of configuration values for your game. If you turn those into a config resource, it allows you to maintain in your file system different configs right so you could set up a bunch of values for your character movement and how much damage they do things like that and without losing that state you just have that in your config main file for example and then you could create a new one like an experimental uh, config file where you, you want to change things up uh, and you can keep everything neat. You can keep them uh, logged in their own file. You can change them out however you want. Uh, it is super, super useful. And in this example, we have our item custom resource, which defines um, everything about those upgrades that you saw in game. Their name, their description, uh, how much they cost, their sprites, um, 
like how they show up in the cafe. We have actions, which uh, are what the item does. And this itself is a custom resource. So we have this, um, where do I have that? Actions, actions. So I have another custom resource action which is then extended into other types. And this action adds ingredients, for example. So when we go to the editor and click the olive jar, for example, uh, I just need to go into actions and then I added that add ingredient action. I just tell it which ingredient I want to add and all of that can be managed into the editor. It's super easy to create a new editor add whatever you need, change stats, add ingredients, whatever. Uh, then I just plug in Celine sprites, put it into uh, the world and we're good to go. Yeah. Uh, and if you're wondering where in your project you might be able to do this, I would say anywhere where you find yourself struggling with massive dictionaries, for example, where you're putting in a bunch of settings in a in a dictionary to try and um, manage content or dialogue or whatever that 99% of the time that could be a custom resource that you can manage super easily. Yeah. And Agub, we did both take the day off today. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Asked for a cheeky holiday. Mm hmm. <laughs> He said to answer your question, my Godot game is going great. I deleted half of it today. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Uh, w because because you made your code that much more efficient, right? Right. So you, there was just a lot of lines you didn't need. And yeah. That, and that's why you. That's you, great. Yeah. It's great, great <laughs> stuff. Good, good. Lean, lean and efficient code, right? Exactly. Have a good one, Lance. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by today. Uh, how do you write test cases for games? I have not um, uh, dabbled into uh, tests for game dev. Um, I know that there are plugins that can aid you in that uh, in the asset library, but I have not ventured in there myself. Uh, and yeah, in general, when it comes to test-driven development, when it comes to game dev, I would highly recommend checking out the Captain Coder on Twitch, because they often do that. Although it might not be Godot specific, depending on which, what project they're working on. Custom resources are so powerful. Yeah, absolutely love them. How do you unlock custom resources? Do I need a key? Can you sell me a key? <laughs> <laughs> much like uh, pretty much everything in Godot, it's just free. You just download it. It comes built in. It's great. It's absolutely great. <laughs> Shrutal asks, do you use state machines for your game? How, um, how do you protect the project from bugs? Okay, I'll answer the, the easy question first. How do you protect the project from bugs? Um, I mean, I was going to say you don't. But. Yeah, that. <laughs> what Celine said. But what do I know? I'm just the artist. <laughs> I don't. Uh, it is very common for bugs to pop up, but again, in the spirit of our project and, and how we decided to keep this scope as low as possible or as small as possible. That's how we're <laughs> limiting that side of things. Bug right? spray. <laughs> Simply don't write the bugs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Most of what we have in our game boils down to very, very simple features. And there might be a few of them, but in isolation, they're all quite simple. So whenever there is a bug, it's often quite easy to track down. Um, so that's great. 
Fantastic. Uh, I'm sure we'll complicate it in our future project, but we'll see. Uh, for your first question, do you use a state machine for your game? Uh, yes. Uh, so if I go over to our cats, you can see a state machine right here. So we use a node-based state machine. It has a parent node, which contains the script for the state machine. And then you have a script for each individual state uh, that basically manages the entirety of that state. Not everyone likes this idea of having a node-based uh, solution, but I've I quite like it to have this like visual aspect um, in this breaking down of each state. Uh, I, I quite enjoy that. And I coded this one myself, although there are, uh, again, some pretty cool plugins on the asset library that you could check out if you don't want to do everything from scratch. Simply don't write the bugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's that easy. Goose asking if anyone knows what happened to Captain Coder. Was it that they were having provide like internet provider yeah. issues? Yeah, something went wrong with with their ISP, and they're getting that resolved. Um, I I believe they're coming back um, in September. Hopefully. Obvious. Do you have a demo for the game? How much does the demo cost? <laughs> the demo is free and is it's it is on Steam. It is on it's, it's Steam. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. That's right. Super Cat Cafe. Each new bug is an opportunity to grow as a developer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. The more bugs you have, the more a developer you are. Yeah. True. Uh, I mean, jokes aside. Uh, debugging is a incredibly important skill that you want to practice. And it, it definitely is something that you can practice. Over time, you'll understand how to track down um, a random error, um, whether it's through printing stuff on your code, using breakpoints, uh, you'll, you'll definitely get better at it as you go. Mm -hmm. How'd you like my Godot? Look at that Godot. Does it look like a Godot? Or does it need more Godot? I feel like it might be a bit more Godot than Godot, but I think we can run with it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Could you try a, a, a version with without the blue, with just like the black and white type thing over the red? Or do you, so do you rather rock with that? So with black? Hmm. I don't know. How would it look like if if the blue was white and your current outline and mouth and stuff was see through to the to the red? Do you think that would look weird? I think this is fine. I think okay. It looks, yeah, I we think can try that. Good. We can try that. Let's do it. I'll make it a tomato. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the Nintendo Direct. <laughs> Oh my god, it's the nerds! We are the nerds. Hello. Flavius, well, thank you so much for for the exclamation mark farts. <laughs> <laughs> I think using state machines gives you more control and safety for the game anyhow. Um, yeah, I mean, the, the upside of it is that it breaks down each piece of logic into its own little box, right? So if something's going wrong, um, so, for example, we had some problems with the cat jumping. They, like, jump from the counters to the shelves and stuff. And there was some issues around that. And I, I knew that to fix it, uh, I just have to look at this script. It, it was in here somewhere. <laughs> so it definitely helps. 100%. Maka's being violent. Yeah, she's not letting me use my iPad. <laughs> Maka, stop. 
I'm just trying to use my iPad. Malice asks, have you made all your assets or where do you find assets your partner can't make? Who's the musician? I've made all the assets that are visual. So everything that you see, I've, I've drawn myself. Mm -hmm. The only thing we have outsourced is the soundtrack. Yes. And I, for the... Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I was just going to say, like, the logo, everything. Mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Yeah. I guess the only thing... Yeah, so visually, Celine did everything. Uh, for fonts, we found them on Itch. Um, you know, there's a ton of free assets that you can find on Itch. Uh, for sound effects, uh, some, again, we purchased on Itch. Um, I got some from a, a humble bundle deal as well. And you always have, <clears throat> I believe it's freesounds.org, which has a ton of sounds that you can make use of. Uh, and for the music, which we could, we could showcase here. For the music, we, we found a composer on Fiverr. We... We basically made a, a spreadsheet with, with a ton of different composers that we found around the internet. Uh, and we really liked this one. We messaged them. They liked the idea of the game. And we just went for it. So we have this, I believe it's a 30 second loop for when you're... Uh, like the cafe is closed and you're just chilling out with your cats, upgrading the cafe and such. And then when you start the game, it transitions into the open cafe theme. Um, and this this was pre Godot 4.3, so we don't have, we're not using the new dynamic music system. I'm very excited to explore that. Um, for this, I'm just basically playing both of the tracks at the same time, and then I just fade one out and fade the other one in when the cafe is open. And this one is a little more, a little more lively. I know a guy who made one of the sound effects in the game, says Goob. This is true. There are so many little Goob Pops in this mm -hmm. game. Yeah. Did you take over Godot? Congrats, <laughs> we, we did. did. Hello, Mitsuru. Uh, yeah, and we're super happy with the result. Uh, they absolutely nailed the vibes, I think. I love it. That's not the Nintendo Direct, says Sunset. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, you are correct. You are correct. You may have clicked on the wrong stream. Wouldn't, but it, welcome be, on wouldn't in. it be great to have a game be a part of a Nintendo Direct? That would one be day quite though? cool. That would yes. be really nice. <laughs> that is definitely something that we'll we'll try for in the future. Well, not being on Nintendo Direct, <laughs> but being on Nintendo. But making period. it, yeah, yeah, getting a, a Switch um, yeah. port. And I think we'll explore. We'll explore the self-publish route first. Yes. And that means applying to Nintendo uh, and then making use of the open source uh, Godot export uh, that has been published um, in the Nintendo developer portal. And hopefully it will just work out. If that doesn't work, then we'd have to maybe contact a, a third party to help us port the game. Mm-hmm. We'll see. We'll find out. Yeah. But yeah, that, that was our music. Miles is saying, I am considering starting a solo dev journey and will cover the coding since that interests me, but art is hard. Mm. So worried about how to source assets ethically and give appropriate kudos to artists and musicians. Yeah, I think that is a totally valid concern. Mm -hmm. And there's a couple different approaches that you can take. Obviously, um, you can try to reach out to a potential partner that can work with you through 
either Discord servers or, you know, just in your community. See yeah. if there's anyone who would want to do, like, maybe you start with, like, a game jam project or something small. Yeah. Um, if that is perhaps, like, too too difficult, you could, yeah, like you say, you can source assets. Under I understand the, the concern of, like, sourcing um, assets ethically. So you'd either be looking to... Um, look for free assets that ha that specifically say that you can use them for commercial projects if you're intending to make a commercial project or if it's for personal use yeah or you for just for learning then i'm sure there's tons of free assets you can use if you're just and learning. i highly highly recommend again itch.io for that yeah. there's just a ton a ton of um assets that you can use for commercial projects yeah. And there's even like, there are a lot of asset packs that you can buy that are not super expensive. So if you do have access to even a very small budget, you might be able to find a couple of asset packs. Um, I mean, you know, I'd recommend if you are gonna invest in it, invest in um, at least the assets that are gonna be like the main focus of your game. You might not need to buy assets for everything that appears. I'm mm. sure there's tons of like free ones that are perfectly fine. But maybe you do want to invest a little bit in like your main character or your just yeah. what you're going to be seeing the most. Or you can try to learn, which is the most well, difficult path I, if I you, if you say, don't yeah. feel comfortable with that. I was going to say a different avenue is designing your, your game's visual style um, with, with your art skill set in mind, right? Yeah. You have amazing games out there that like just use shapes for example yeah and they use they make use of the color palette and the lighting and particles and things like that to to make it look very unique yeah um so yeah if if, if you are not comfortable doing art but you really want to make a um arpg you know it's going to be difficult so yeah. you might have to find a different solutions for that. Yeah, humble bundles are great. And also there's a little bit of like an in-between that you can do while you're learning. And um, again, I would recommend any asset pack that you download or purchase, just check the yeah. check what they say. Some some people are put a note that they're happy for you to modify the assets in any way in any way. And if that if that is um, allowed then you know you can like open up uh just ms paint you know <laughs> and recolor you can recolor stuff right. if you don't feel comfortable like drawing something from scratch you can always purchase assets that you know have the the you know they allow for modification and then you can modify which can assets. often go a long way because yeah. you'll, you'll find um if you go on itch look for a game category and then just play like five of them chances are you're gonna spot the same assets yeah. for, for certain games. So even just going the extra mile and doing a slight modification or a slight color change, it's just gonna be, make your game that much more unique. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, just make sure you that the description of the right. asset packs says that it's okay to do that. And then mm -hmm. I think you're good to go. And I think that is a very good way to start if you're not super confident with starting from scratch, but you do wanna put your own spin on on some of the more com most commonly used yeah. free assets out there. And Laurie said earlier, or use your main your three main colors for the logo to. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll save out two versions so that you can just give it a go and yeah. see which one you like. Uh, dragon fleas. Hello. Dragons have fleas. That's crazy. <laughs> what do you think about domain driven design inside of gaming? <laughs> Domain oh. driven design. There's a cat. <laughs> There's a cat. Who did that? And it goes on the trigger. Domain driven design. Collection of principles and patterns that help developers craft elegant object systems. This is not something I've encountered before. So. Yeah, I'm afraid I don't have an an opinion on it. He has no opinion. Yeah. Oh, my Google. What do you want? 
The Godot Direct, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the Godot Direct. Which, by the way, uh, if you are here and you're not aware, uh, this whole week is a Godot Takeover week. So it yesterday is. we had the wonderful Jotson uh, that took over the channel, and I highly recommend you check them out. Uh, but there's still much more to come. We're here today. Tomorrow, uh, you can catch Full Box on the channel. Then we have Exo Drifter on Thursday, and finally JD does Dev on Friday. So give the channel a follow, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be fun. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amazing lineup this week, yeah. Mm -hmm. Full Box tomorrow, exactly. Yep. Maka is mauling my hand. <laughs> I'm not even, I'm just trying to mind my own business here drawing and she's just reaching for my arm. And this here in the background, <sighs> uh, I just gonna accidentally tab to it, but this is our current set of tasks to finish the, the video game. Oh. So there's a fair bit and we're trying to do it by November. Um, but we're, we're working through it. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, there's a lot to do. <laughs> oh, I didn't mean to do that. Botmonk said, I still want all these ingredients to fall off a shelf at the top being pushed off by cats. Yeah, so, um, Botmonk, that we do have an idea of showing that at the very beginning and end of the game currently. Whether we'll get to do that, I don't know, hopefully. But the idea is when you start your very first cafe day, the camera would slowly pan up and reveal the cats yeah. up, up in the rafters, like knocking stuff down. Yeah. And then it would pan back down. And then by the end of the game, once yeah. you've unlocked everything, maybe you get one final pan. And then instead of the cats just like pushing things off, it's like a whole like kitchen like master yeah. chef kitchen yeah. of cats like chopping ingredients <laughs> yeah. like cooking stuff yeah. like you know they got a whole brigade up there that's the idea <laughs> i don't think we'll make that happen <laughs> for, the <laughs> yeah. for the release at least we'll see we'll see <laughs> but that would be so funny uh ddd probably not applicable to game development you can find it in web app development i don't know ddd perhaps you saw multiple games are dealing with networking cases. I see. I see. Go creep! Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. What about this? You want to try this or no? This is what you were expecting, hoping for? Mm, no, because then that's red over red, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't think we want red over red. I think you're probably okay to just use the the Godot blue because the yeah because the dark blue doesn't make sense the yellow doesn't make sense yeah it doesn't go with the with the white the yellow right yeah okay let's do let's do the blue I mean if and if I do white then you can't see the eyes so mm -hmm. yeah yeah okay you wanna export that? Uh, I yeah, I've I saved that in. in the in the GUI. It's in the GUI. 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 Okay. So we're gonna go over. Um, Larry says to switch the background to color Godot blue. Well, in this case, this little sprite is gonna go in our main title screen, which the background is red. So that yeah. is why the background was red there. Um, well, yeah, it'll be, it'll appear at the beginning of our game. Because you say you have a little made with Godot. Um, yeah. Little blurb. You know, most game engines, you, you have to pay to get their splash screen out. But for some reason, and I, I don't think I'm alone here, uh, when it comes to Godot, it, it, it's always the choice to get the Godot logo in. <laughs> <You Yeah, know? laughs> yeah. Um, and thank you. Thank you for throwing out your ideas. Uh, you know, love to hear them. Always good. Uh, Mr. Zombie asks, um, how do you guys deal with burnout or brain fog? 
yeah it it happens it mm. it happened to us on this project already yeah so, um at the end of last year we finished our our initial prototype of the game yes and we were burnt out and we stopped working on it for about like two to three months two to three months yeah yeah we then entered a game jam did a a new sort of game prototype um and that kind of helped just like clear our minds as well taking mm -hmm. a little bit of a break um but then yeah once we jumped back into it after we started streaming we actually found that streaming was a really good way to kind of keep us disciplined so we knew we wanted to work on the game for like a specific amount of time each week like we wanted to make progress every week even if it was a little bit of progress yeah and the streaming for us it really helped us yeah just have that discipline um yeah. i feel like if if it weren't for the streaming i don't think we would have made as much progress as we did mm -hmm. um and and, and and i think you can achieve that in different forms right yeah. you have to ask what did the stream actually provide to us and i think one was a schedule right so we had set days where we were going live and we were um and we we're going to be working on the game which is great but two i believe it was community and accountability right yes so if you if you find yourself a, a community that you enjoy being a part of and you make it a habit of sharing your progress um and you know hopefully people interact with you on that and ask you questions and give you feedback that kind of creates this uh, this feedback loop that you you start craving and you feel like okay next week i'm gonna have to do something or else i'm not gonna be able to tell you know the, the peers that i respect i'm not gonna be able to show them what i've what yeah. i've done the new things i've added so yeah, accountability, I think, is a, is a big part of it. Yeah, and also, I would say, don't force yourself to work on the things that you're not feeling at the moment. Of course, sometimes it is important to, to I guess, power through something. Mm -hmm. I guess more so in, in your area than mine. Mm -hmm. Or, like, I sometimes abandon sprites halfway through just because I'm tired of working <laughs> on it. And I just yeah. move on to something else. I'm like, I'll get back to that. I... I know I need to work on something, but I don't feel like working on that right now. I'm not going to force myself to work on something I don't want to work on right now. So I just, just going to go do something else. Because mm -hmm. uh, at the end of the day, we'll have to get done anyway. So it's it's not like I'm wasting time per se. Yeah. So that also kind of helps. Um, Miles asked, do you guys do jams? Or where do you recommend finding jam communities to just start producing? It's the is the itch calendar the best place to start? So we've only done one jam. Mm -hmm. We did the uh, uh, January Pirate Software Jam. And we found that to be a really fun experience. I thought it was really good. It, it was It was really incredibly good. We, fun. we learned a lot. We had a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And, and that, uh, that's again, like, the accountability, right? Yeah. It's, it's like... You, had, you got a deadline. Yeah, a deadline <laughs> and accountability uh that you that you get to impose on yourself and if it doesn't work out there's no consequence so um i think it's a a good space to to try things yeah and you just have to be okay with not achieving exactly the goal that you're you're setting out to and being happy with just learning something new and getting better each time yeah definitely <laughs> A schedule is the only reason I'm continuing progress in my game dev right now. I'm so burned out with everything going on. Yeah, mm. and that's very, very common. And honestly, sometimes it I think it does get to a point where you do need to step back and take a break, and that is absolutely fine. Um, you you can't um, push yourself too hard either. Yeah. I keep getting angry notifications of my to-do apps. <laughs> <laughs> Just do it! Just do it. And honestly... I think sometimes the hardest part is to sit down and start working on it. So, you know, sometimes it helps me to sort of trick my brain 
into just telling myself I'm just gonna I'm just gonna do five minutes I'm just gonna do five minutes and that's it that's I'm just committing five minutes and you know usually I just keep going because it, it was just hard to start to get started and if after five minutes I really I really don't want to do it then you know you really didn't want to do it in the first you really didn't want to do it so it's okay yeah be kind to yourself <laughs> Yeah. How do you deal with violencia? <laughs> <laughs> well, my hand has been mauled, so I would say not very well. <laughs> I would say uh, I, I would be kind to yourself is is very important. Yeah. Like there's enough people out there that are gonna judge you. Just leave that to them to them and just be happy with your wins. Count your wins. Let's give Makuku a little treat to see if she stops harassing me because okay. I am being cat harassed right now. <laughs> Look at my arm. That's what I'm just trying to work. <laughs> it's because you let her. How could I not let her shred my arm apart? Look at her. She's so cute. She's just playing. <laughs> she loves those treats so much. <laughs> This is true, not getting feedback is the quickest way to lose motivation for a project. Yeah, yeah. If you're working on the project alone and you're not interacting with other people about it, I think it will be very, very hard. Unless you have an insane amount of discipline, it's going to be hard for you to keep going. So, yeah, I highly recommend... Even if it's just here on Twitch, you can just Look, Maka, you can go over here. kind of participate in chat <laughs> on, on some Twitch stream and um, chill out with a streamer, talk about your game every once in a while. Um, just, even things like that will kind of create that, that rhythm for you to, to feel like your, your game is actually being seen. Yeah. I'm learning to code to hopefully get in, in the next Pirate Jam. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's the one we participated in. And it was really fun. Um, and someone asked... Uh, oh, it, it was you, Malice. Itch Calendar is the best place to start? Yes. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I fed the Makuku. My desk is free. I am free to draw on my own desk. Oh. Aragubas, hello, Godot official, that's right. Yes. And yeah, just to answer again that question, what I'm using, I'm using an iPad Pro and the app called Pixaki for the art. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to fail because one failure is one step towards success. Yeah. We failed. Oh, yeah, don't We failed be at least three times. Yeah. Before we actually made a thing proper thing absolutely we failed but we, we came back <laughs> we came back you just gotta keep trying just keep going you'll get there and you'll be so proud once you once you do something a lot of streamers let you share your work uh do it and give you the streamer share everything yep absolutely uh, i would say please practice common sense though and be respectful yes. like uh, if you go onto uh, a stream and the, your first message is sending out links and asking streamers for feedback on, on your game, chances right. are they're not going to react well to that. Um, at least for us, that that's how I feel. I Yeah, if that's your first message. Yeah, like I, I like interacting with people that are part of the community and I know like what game dev means to them and i can give feedback and, and interact with them on that um so yeah just be mindful of the environment that you're going into be mindful and even be demure, <laughs> be demure exactly <laughs> um, and if twitch chat is not the best place for that uh, i'm sure that you could join their discord and there will be appropriate channels for you to share your work um 
today is my six month sub to you nerd to, to oh nerdy nerds gosh. that's insane goob thank you goob, thank you thank you so much it is flying i can't believe it's been six months yeah <laughs> um camillo hello <laughs> hello godoa engine yeah hello okay so for our little spra splash screen here right. <laughs> <laughs> sorry i'm doing the thing <laughs> Just been an hour. <laughs> I already can't speak. Um, for our splash screen, we're using an animation player to do this, uh, to do uh, the the moving and revealing of the logo and such. Yeah. So what we want to do now is, so our logo is revealed, and then a game by two nerdy nerd shows up. And then we want to switch out, like when the Made with Godot comes in, we want to switch out one logo for the other. But we want we want to make it juicy. We want to make it. You want to make it look good. Yeah. Good, so yeah. I'm gonna use a fade and a position um, animation to hopefully make it look real nice. Oh, Mark is screaming at me now. Makuku, it's not dinner time yet. It's only four. <laughs> All right, time to shine. Make a Tetris clone with this exploding blocks. But if you're trying to fit the blocks, and then you're exploding them away, I need more detail. I need a a game design document oh. stat. No, Maka. No. Please go to his desk, not mine. I already did my time. <laughs> okay, so we're going to fade out the logo, but at the same time, we're going to move it slightly to the right. The Maka takes over the nerdy takeover. Takeover reception. <laughs> So we're going to key that position. 15% of game design documents are underwhelming. There's your game design document stat. 75% <laughs> of stats are made up entirely. <laughs> Wait, why didn't that work? Oh, right. I need to do this. So if we do that, we keyframe that. Now it does a little movement. We're going to make sure that movement is set to cubic animation. So it feels a little more natural. And in addition to that, one of the rules of animation is you want a little bit of anticipation. So what we're going to do is True. just before moving right, we're actually going to move left and see how that works. Been messed up. Oh no. Oh no, I didn't. I just have to make sure it starts out in that initial position. So it goes. There we go. So it moves left and then goes right. And then basically, we want to do the same thing with the Godot logo. We're going to start. We're going to start on the left. Key that. Then we're going to animate over the intended position. So we're going to duplicate that and then here we're going to go past the intended position so it like bounces back. I've now moved on. I'm trying to make uh, some of those hanging planters that you see like outside buildings and stuff on the Right. So Selena is working on a little intro animation um, that we're going to add to the very beginning of the game when you first go into the cafe. Yeah, and um, here in uh, the UK, there's always a lot of lovely 
hanging like planters and stuff outside like pubs and things like that mm -hmm. and i really wanted to kind of evoke mm -hmm. those vibes so i'm gonna try to do that and says i i learned more from failure than success learn to embrace that failure doesn't mean defeat absolutely absolutely many streamers have a channel in the discord dedicated to showing your work yeah you'll also have you'll you can also find discord communities that are not affiliated to any stream they're they're just indie dev communities um where people share a bunch of things you can ask questions if you're stuck uh, share your projects all that will there be a third a foggy clouds <laughs> No, I don't think so. What? I think I got. I think I got what Skydriver meant. <laughs> Fifteen percent of game design documents are underwhelming. There's your game design document. I've, I've read that to you earlier, sir. Sorry, I was I was focusing. It was he was. Seventy-five percent of stats are made up entirely. What? <laughs> <laughs> And I believe someone asked about some app. Did I see that? I answered a question about what I was using. Oh, what you were uh, using? Got it. Oh yeah, that's what it was. You said you need a game design document stat. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes, that makes sense. <laughs> okay. So no 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 Maka. this no, is no, the no, idea. No. no no no, I need my own Makuku deterrent. She's trying to get onto my desk again. No Makuku, we talked about. So we this. reveal our logo. Okay, I like it, but it needs to be like ten times faster. When you read the comment forty-five minutes after the context in which she said loses the effect. <laughs> That's my bad. That's my bad. She's trying to like slow mo walk her way onto my desk like I can't see her. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna try this. So it's quicker. We probably want the fade to be quicker as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's just it's something else. And then we pull this back a little bit. <laughs> Redeemed Maka Treat. I just gave her. We just did Maka Treat like 10 minutes ago. I don't know why why she's so so needy today. I <laughs> 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 It's still too slow. Like, it needs to be, like, really... It needs, like, weight. And it's not there. What is this? Do I need this? Do you need this? I Delete. Don't know. We're gonna do this, and we're gonna do this, and then, oh! And then we're gonna do this. Burkana, this is really interesting. I've been learning Godot for a couple of months and struggling with the animation player. I love the animation player. It's so simple to animate anything you want. Um, I, hmm. Do you have any per particular thing that you are struggling with that we can help with? Um, I'd be happy to, I'd be happy to go over it if you'd like.
redeems Celine Froge hat. <laughs> Do you guys want Froge hat? Okay. This is a two nerdy nerds special. Pizza, oh god, not the pizza hat. <laughs> For context, on our stream, um, viewers can redeem a uh, 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 channel point reward thing for us to wear a hat. And some of them are quite silly. <laughs> Maka Makuku Cam. Here we go. I have a pizza hat. It's a thing. Uh, animation player is updated in 4.3, right? Have uh, have not tried it yet. Um, I'm not sure. I mean, it's very likely that that's the case. Um, I know that they updated the the whole like uh, keyframe manipulation, so you can duplicate, copy, paste, move around the the keyframes. Um, very possible that there have been updates beyond that. There is my cuckoo. Bye, my cuckoo. Oh, she meow when you pet her. <laughs> <laughs> She is an instrument of violencia. Uh, okay. So, let's see how this looks. Um, by the way, my... Yeah, there we go. Got it. You got it. You're on it. I did not mean to click that button, but sure. We run in. That's pretty good. Maybe can be faster. Maybe, maybe. I was drawing on the wrong layer. Why is the music playing? I think we can speed it up a smidge. Nice pizza time. <laughs> pizza time. Yeah, it's missing the pineapple. I'm so sorry. One day there will be a pineapple. I need One. to add some pineapple to the pizza hat. Hey, you stole Tom Millman's cat. <laughs> 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 yeah, they're very similar. Uh, Maka and Luna. Yeah. Maybe they're long lost sisters. Long lost babies. No, Makuku, no, no, stay on his desk. I'm not sure what your message means, Skydriver. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, Maga, no. No. There's Luna. Look at that. Cute. Luna. We do have a cat called Luna because I, I, it's um one of my childhood kitty cats, but she was yeah. all gray. Gray cat. Do an even faster animation. Let's do it like super fast. See how that looks. There we go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can we get a yeah, 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 yeah? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, how about this? I quite like that. I almost feel like it needs a sound, you know, like when it happens, mm. like a like a whoosh or something. Like a little whooshy whoosh. 
I don't like these leaves. Oh, Get out of here. Cross looks better, yeah. It, it's kind of weird when, when it, they're very floaty. I mean, usually it'll have music in the background, so. Yeah, I like it. Ship it! Ship it. <laughs> like no ship it emoji. There you go, <laughs> Digital Iliad had some. <laughs> Uh, okay, so now we can commit that change. Another great tip for any beginner game devs out there. Learn source control. It will it will help you so much you have no idea. It might save your life. And you're I know I know that you out there I know that I have this hat on, but you're gonna have to take me seriously. I know that I said that and you went pfft. Who needs backups? <laughs> Whatever. Who needs source control? Whatever. But you're you gonna need learn. Source control. You're gonna learn, and it's gonna suck. So trust us. <laughs> do the do the easy route. Trust the nerd with the pizza hat. <laughs> <laughs> nice pizza hat. <laughs> Is it new? <laughs> <laughs> We've had it for a while. Yeah. It's uh. It's a thing. <laughs> you have to take me seriously. <laughs> I love spending two hours changing a file then rolling it back because I just made it worse. Yep, exactly. But how easy is it when you can just, you know, right click discard. Boom. Let me commit before I actually accidentally click that. Um, added Godot logo to splash screen. <laughs> Just get good. <laughs> <laughs> the trick with version control is just write all commit message. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I definitely don't do that. My commit messages are always super descriptive. And I'm sure that if we scroll. Are you sure about that? There's definitely not going to be anything weird whatsoever. I don't know, I don't know about that one. I'm gonna, gonna have to doubt on they, that last They're one. all just great. So, like this one. Do not push this. For the love of God, stop. <laughs> What was that about? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Commit message. I'm sure, did stuff. I'm sure it's fine. <laughs> did stuff. <laughs> and some things too. Don't forget the things. So I accidentally committed a thing that made it so that the player made a ton of money every single day, regardless of how they performed. Ah, uh, of course you did. Um, yeah. yeah. Happens so. Okay. Yeah. Right. I'll we'll make mistakes. My commit description is like, okay, I need to go to bed. <laughs> or yay, I didn't break anything new. That's, again. Yet. Count, count your wins. Count your wins. <laughs> Yet. <laughs> I'm drawing a plant. Oh, wow. Ooh, that's looking so good. Yeah, I like this plant. Are you using Git or something piece. specific for source control for Godot? Uh, just Git, yeah. And I'm using the GitHub desktop app uh, to manage it. Are you using something for asset controls, aka source control? Uh, all the assets are in the Git 
uh, GitHub repo. Yeah. We don't have any special workflow for assets. No, we just have the Google Drive. Right. Mm. I've committed a 1,200 line change at work titled Good Luck with no further description. <laughs> oh no! I feel this get history. Okay. For Lansky, <laughs> please, please understand that this environment where I am the sole developer working on this project is very different <laughs> from a work environment. <laughs> Here the consequences is just for yourself. Yeah. It's just like you did this to yourself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but you know, you do you, you know? <laughs> just careful, be careful out there. <laughs> 99% of the time the message doesn't matter. That's true, but, but the, the point one percent when it matters, it really matters, right? <laughs> if you're looking, it means that something went seriously wrong. <laughs> Are the timers not off? We don't have them. Wait, were they on screen? No. They weren't, right? No, we're just yeah. gonna go with the vibes. Yeah. <laughs> we're just gonna go. When my brain gets overheated, I'll take it all. Just, it's gonna be based on the vibes. Mm. And you don't know when it will matter. Yeah. 100%, I'm much more careful with my commits on a collab project. Yeah. 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 Okay. So we've added our... Our splash screen, Godoskis. I'm sorry, go dots. Um, there was a, another pronunciation someone said, and I wish I remembered it. There's so many fun ones. There are. There's some really good ones. I love how creative everyone is. God, God, O. God, O. Love to see ya. Go, dude. Go doot, yeah. Go doot. Gudo. Okay, so next up, we're going to venture into our custom resource shenanigans, and we're gonna make a new item. I believe, Celine, correct me if I'm wrong, we have some ovens you do they should be in the upgrades folder and if they're not maka stop trying to come to my desk stop okay Please. so we have we have these ovens here let's make Please, a new folder let me know if they're missing the chicken because it is very important that they have the, the chicken the oven contains a chicken that is good that is what i want to hear i can confirm this i'm just gonna pull these in here for now Good dope. <laughs> Good dope. <laughs> yeah. That's me. That's me every single time I'm convinced there's a, a bug with um, Godot. And then turns out it's me. And in my code. That's when I go. Good dope. <laughs> Good dope. <laughs> Oh, that looks like such a fun little vine I made. I don't think I can do it again. But it's also not quite right, but I don't want to delete it because I do like it. What, what do you feel is not right about it? It doesn't look like my, like these. Let me... Like your reference? Mm. Send it to you if you wanted to show it. Maybe it'll look more like that once I add the flowers and stuff to the actual. Right. I, I really like the colors though. Really? The colors are just the, the base palette. I'm just, again, I, I, I never start with color work. I always just start with shapes. 
I, I just like the really bright and then the darker at the yeah. bottom. I think it looks really cool. Yeah, so the contrast will likely stay like that. Oh, yeah. um, if you take out the art cam for a sec. Oh, right. Sorry. Okay. This is the reference here. Yeah, this is what I'm trying to do. But do you see how there's like a lot more leaves? But it also does kind of look like what I did. Is not is it not just what you did, but then like... There's some more wispy ones coming or, out. Or there's a, another similar strand. Like, like left nearby. and right of it. Yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe I'll just do the main plant first. That's a relatable situation. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's me. Yeah. Um, recently, we released our demo. And some, some Bye. awesome people... <laughs> that stream were uh, were cool enough to uh, play play our demo on stream, which was super, super, super cool to, to witness that. And there was this bug where uh, we have these, these items on the shelves here. Oh my gosh, yes. But then when they played it, Everything was fine. Everything was working fine, but it would show like this. It would be one pixel off of the shelf. And then they would buy the, the, the next ingredient and it would be a pixel off of the shelf. And I started going down this rabbit hole of like, wait, is the Y position like a float? And it's like rounding rounding up rather than down or or something in the rendering is not going right um nope it was me <laughs> <laughs> no it was just me it was just you yeah oh no uh and that was because we go into the game here when i open the shop you might be able to see it. There's a little animation on the on the silhouette. If I close the shop, it like animates up. And then when I open the shop, it kind of bounces into place. So that animation, which plays when you open and close the shop, there was an instance, like a, a set of events that you could trigger where as the shop is opening, something else in the game happens that closes the shop. So while that animation was happening, the shop was being closed and the uh, the node was being animated again on top of the other animation that was still playing, which essentially made it so that the actual final position of the item was different than it was initially. That was it. It was just not handling animations correctly and ending up in a weird state. <laughs> Replay the animation from a different star position. Yep. Yep. Um, and that's because it was using... It was using tweens to do the animation. It wasn't using a, a, an animation player that has a set position. It was just a tween that would animate from the current position. And then it would like make it jump or whatever. But because that initial position was changed, it was just broken from then on until you restarted the game, I guess. So, careful with your tweens, kids. They did fix a, a pixel stability issue in 4.3. Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, that was on rendering, I believe. Yeah, it was this one here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is true. As much as I would love to say, yep, this was the cause. It was just me. It was just me. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you're the problem and that's okay. <laughs> I think so. Webernardo makes his own problems. Yep, I do. Someone was talking about how do you keep your game free of bugs? There it is. You just you just have to fix them. 
once you break the things. <laughs> <laughs> Asahi, the rising sun, hello. Nerdy nerds, oh my gosh, memories. <laughs> <laughs> what are you working on? Uh, we are working on our cat cafe game. Yes! <laughs> are the cats fighting? They are indeed. They're cats, fine. don't fight, be friends. <laughs> Catitos, please. Can't wait to try out the new Godot version. There's so many cool things to 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 try out. Yeah, I I upgraded immediately after it came out, and it was super easy, by the way. Um. Yeah, you were like ready to spend like a little bit of of time just, just yeah. in case, but it was just done super quick. And thank you so so much. I don't know if anyone on the on the Godot dev team that was involved in, in these PRs, but whoever decided it was worth it to do the the migration button for things like the the tile sets, where you can just go here, extract tile map layers to, to the new system. Thank you. It was worth it. It really was worth it. Thank you. It just worked, and it was perfect. <laughs> I'm not saying I remember y'all. My first time ever, my first time ever meeting you, fine people. Okay, welcome on in. You're not wearing the pizza hat anymore. It's just me wearing this. I just took it off. No. <laughs> I was getting warm. <laughs> I was talking about what I used to call my subscribers on my old channel. Did you call them nerdy nerds? That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know if that button works on classes that inherit from tile map? Uh, I don't know that for a fact. I don't know. Uh, okay, so we have our oven sprites. Now, I'll just set up the oven as is, and then we can do the the piece of furniture thing that's a, supposed to go in, I guess. Okay. Uh, so we're going to create a new resource, and we're going to use our item custom resource. We're going to call that oven. The cats are fighting again. <laughs> They're really feisty today, they are. huh? They are. Aggressive. Branch off the main branch, try it, get back to us. <laughs> Again, source control. It's huge. And that that was another thing. Like we have we have a commercial project here. Well, soon to be, hopefully. Um so things like upgrading your engine version and whatnot can be uh can feel a little scary. Yeah. Um and I don't think I would have done it if I didn't have source control. When you have source control, you can just, you can do anything you want. You, you can't, you can break it and then you can just revert to the, the working version, right? Right. So I just went all in immediately. And they paid off. Each. How long have y'all been devving? Um, I would say overall two, mm -hmm. two years, maybe. Two years? That we've been game devving. Yeah, it was, yeah. 2022 we started um and this project we started last year i don't know august september yeah something like that around this time last year we started yeah yeah so we're coming up on a year on this game with breaks with breaks but yeah it's it's kind of crazy I really need to learn version control. It, it is worth it. And I know that it can feel daunting. Um, like the concepts can feel like really out there, but you can take it one step at a time, right? You don't have to fully understand every aspect of it from the get go. And if you look into a tutorial on a, a very visual tool, 
like GitHub Desktop, for example, and there are many other alternatives. Um, this handles a lot of the heavy lifting for you. Um, so I recommend maybe starting with that. And then if you feel comfortable with um, moving into the terminal and you want to do that for some reason, then you can do that later. Digital Iliad introduced me to GitHub Desktop with Godot, Lifesaver. Yeah, yeah. Just spreading the good word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. For work, I I just use Git in the terminal. It, it does make a lot of things just faster. Um, but I didn't want to set up like a decent terminal environment on my Windows machine. So I just went with GitHub Desktop and it's been more than enough, especially because I'm working by myself. There's not that much that I do other than push, pull, change branch. Like it, it's, it's fairly minimal, you know? Yeah. Have a good one, Saul. Yeah. Thank you for stopping by today. Okay. So we have our new oven item, our custom resource here. We're going to put a name oven. Uh, we don't need a description because we're going to have an action. So the oven, oh, I actually need to fix this here. Uh, I want to change my item resource. So action should be an array of action. Hopefully this doesn't break. Fingers crossed. Things, but again, version control, we can just roll back. I can just roll back. So now when I do this, there we go. So we have a few different action types. I'm going to do the add ingredients item action. And then, and then, and then I want to, the oven will unlock the chicken ingredient. So I can just add again, my custom resource ingredient to the action, which asks for an ingredient. Yeah. Um, Verlansky is asking, so is it just you two, one dev, one artist? Yes, we are a team of two. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, I'm, I'm drawing some stuff here. Okay, so price, we're just gonna set fairly random price for now, like 250. Don't worry about balancing later. Oh yeah, the economy in the game right now is wackadoodle. Yeah, <laughs> gonna have to do some balance. Passes. We got we got sandwiches for like we are like thousand dollar sandwiches in here. <laughs> I mean, I think we still will. Yeah, we probably will. <laughs> Maybe we'll have tens of thousands of dollars. Gosh, <laughs> are they made of solid gold? Yeah. <laughs> Should we add that as an ingredient? Just it's a solid gold. Gold, yeah, gold dust. I mean, there are drinks with like the little gold, right. gold specks right. are in there, so mm -hmm. you know. Uh, okay, so now we add the sprites for the customers that want the fancier things in life. Exactly. We got oven one. The reason why we're using sprite frames instead of just a texture is because some items um, use animated sprites. Like, like the pan, for example. Yeah. Uh, you recently started a project collaborating with exactly the same setup. One artist, one dev. Any tips? Hmm. Is there anything in particular that you are finding challenging right now or just looking for just some general advice? Because I feel like for us, I, I think we take the approach of like, um, as I draw an asset, I kind of save it and we test it in the game. But I also um, don't try to do everything at once. Like I know we will have a lot of polish passes. So like as soon as I have something that kind of works we just have it yeah. we test it and then we refine it um later yeah um and then we're also not too worried about having everything final 
in the game while you're programming. Sometimes you're happy to just use like placeholder, mm -hmm. um, like rectangles yeah. and boxes and things. And then eventually once I have the asset, you know, we, we swap it in. Yeah, uh, I, I think that generally speaking, unless the, the game's visuals are really complicated, the art side of things will be moving faster than the dev That's side true. of things. Um, so the artist will usually have more time, um, on their hands than the programming, the programmer side. Um, but with that said, it, it feels bad when an artist spends a really long time working on, uh, some art. And then when you put it in the game, you realize that it doesn't work or that's not exactly what you needed to make an animation work or something. So... I would say just test often, right? Yes. Uh, even with animations and stuff, if you, if the artist can do like the general block out or I don't know what the term is, but yeah. And like even detail, even, yeah. Even before animating a sprite, I feel like I always give you a static sprite. Yeah. Then I work like you just have that as a placeholder and then I work on the animations because it might be that once yeah. you put the static sprite in the game, we want to change something. Yeah. Then I animate it and, you know, then that goes in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then... Uh, on, on the art side, I'm not on the art side, but I feel like this is a good thing to tell your artist, is when they're working on a piece of art, they should be doing so on top on top of a, of a screenshot or the the art for the real game in the background. Oh yeah, I always I have um. Oh yeah, you can show your little game. master thing. This is well, I have a couple yeah. now because the game has gotten so big. Yeah. So like for example, you'll see I have here a bunch of stuff that's in the game, and mm -hmm. this is just um, me drawing just to see if if what I'm drawing fits the vibe of of the scene. Yeah. Um, I should have named my layers. I don't. <laughs> it's a bit chaotic. But then, like, here I can see if, like, all the ingredients contrast well with the background. Anything new that I make. Um, the, does it fit the color scheme? Does it fit the mood? You know, I've since made another one. This is where I was testing all the UI and the different look for the cafe. You know, same mm -hmm. thing. Like, are, are, are the same elements going to work? And then I just have a lot of artboards like this, where like this just this one started well. This one I had named everything at the beginning, and then it <laughs> kind of went sideways. Uh <laughs> but yeah, it it helps keep the scale in check. Okay, yeah. Exactly, scale. I think for me that's the most important thing, making yeah. sure that the scale of elements makes sense, like in relation to each other. Mm -hmm. um, and then, yeah, just that everything kind of works yeah. together. Yeah, like you said, the contrast. You'd be surprised how, you know, you're just drawing, say, like a, an enemy or something in isolation or a, a chest. But then yeah. you don't realize that when you put it in, in the game and it can not only be on top of uh, dirt, it can also be on top of grass and on top of wood and on top of uh, stone or concrete or whatever. And that can completely throw off your um, your design and, and have the, that chest be like hidden in the background when you didn't intend to. Yeah. So, yeah. So I will basically draw every sprite on one of these canvases first before I then take it into its own canvas and then maybe polish it a little bit. Mm. Um, <laughs> gummy Wummy Worm. Art style is cute. Thank you. Um, are y'all not using tile maps, just backgrounds and props? So because our game is just like the one scene, yeah. The, there is just that is the one scene you're looking at. I think that's why we're not using tile maps. Is that correct? Yeah, we we are using like um, tile map nodes to achieve some of these things, just because they're like repeatable. Okay. Um, but we're not using like sets like tile sets yeah. to build out levels because we just have the one level so to speak the do icon is placeholder for everything is a must <laughs> I, I do agree with that roki that's like that is the Godot way 
right? Yeah. Oh, Maka meowed. Maka, it's not your dinner time yet. Maybe you should have a cheat code that turns every ingredient it's into a good dough. good dough icon sprite. That would be funny. I'll be down for that. <laughs> I mean, you you mostly gotta gotta do that. Less work for me, <laughs> more work <laughs> for you. I hit that feeling having to ask, "Hey, sorry, can you try drawing this a third time?" <sighs> yeah. You no, just, no comment. You just gotta ask, uh, and then hope that. Catch your artist in a good mood. Maybe offer them mm. a little snack first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you yeah. know, maybe next time you want me to make a change, before you ask, just come, come with, look, those sweet treat. And then I thought, <laughs> and you can be like, you know, you know that thing? What oh. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, of course there are creative differences. We've had our creative differences. Mm. Um, and of course that, that will depend on the, per the the dynamic of the person you're working with. Mm -hmm. I tend to be a little resistant to criticism because I have a very specific vision in my brain. So. And I'm incredibly opinionated. Yeah. So, so sometimes we do um, butt heads, but I feel like yeah. that's normal. I feel like in the end we do resolve it. And yeah. I think I think we both compromise a little bit. Mm -hmm. So I think it's just about it's just about that. You just have to find the middle ground. Yeah. And especially when it comes to art, Talking about art can only take you so far. Yeah. And sometimes someone will be describing something and you'll feel like you don't you don't like that idea. But when they put it on uh pixel, I don't it's not paper. I don't know what I don't know what saying I was going for here. When they draw it, yeah, then you realize that what they were saying was completely completely different from how you were receiving it on your yeah, end. Yeah, yeah. Or, so, or again, like maybe I'm seeing something specific and I haven't like gotten the chance to fully flesh it out yet. And I feel like until I flesh it out, it's not going to look good. Yeah. So I, that's kind of like why I don't want to show you things sometimes. It's like, it's, it's not, it's yeah. not done. It, you're not going to like it because it's not done yet. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, just got to talk it out. Okay, and then we're gonna instantiate. We've made our oven item, so we're going to instantiate uh, an item scene. And the way we've done it here is we can just pass in that item over um, in an export variable, and you can see it automatically changes out the sprite and everything um, on the item. And this is using a tool script, so uh, part of the script runs in the editor, and as soon as you change the resource you're providing it, it updates the sprite for you. It's a little treat. Hey, Elfie Fey, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> the, al the alternative is worse. <laughs> <laughs> or do a favor. Hey, sorry, you need to throw this icon in the trash. So I'll go take out the actual trash for us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. An unstoppable opinion versus an immovable vision is like the artistic version of unstoppable force versus immovable objects. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But you know, it, if you're working on a team, it is inevitable. Yeah. Especially in in a small team where everyone gets uh, a bit of a say. A bit of a say in the game design, you're going to run into it, and you just have to work through it, and either find common ground. Yeah. Or if you just can't do that, then someone just has to to give it to the other person and say, okay, we'll do it your way, and, and hopefully it works out. But you can't let that you can't let that create animosity right no. you just have to move past it cuz at the end of the day you both have the games or the project's best interest at heart right Isn't this 
looking cute. Very cute. Yaria, hello. Were hello. you guys developing an official? We're working on our pixel art cat cafe game. Yeah. Mm hmm. I mean, this is your, this is gonna be very small, but like, I think it's looking cute. It, it's looking very cute. I like it. I'm drawing it like out here, but it'll actually be kind of cropped off a bit on the side. Um, like it, it won't end on the left. No, it's not in the correct place necessarily. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, but I wouldn't mind if it was if you if you didn't see the left end of it if it was. Yeah. Off. So if I actually do. Do, and I should name these layers. I really should. Guys, name your. Don't do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> name your layers. <laughs> Actually, name your layers. So yeah, we go. So like, it would be more. It would. It would. Yeah. Actually, be more like this. I like that. Yeah. Cool. Um, I might even try scaling it like two x and see mm -hmm. what that looks mm -hmm. like. But yeah, I think lush is good. And then on this side, I was just gonna use the other end because you know, if you can't see it, then. It'll be the grand opening of the cafe, right? So, yeah, it can be lush. Oh snap! We got a raid from Full Box. Is that a Full Box raid? Hello, My hello, goodness. nerds. Hello. How's it going, Full Box? Hope you had a great stream. And if if you guys are not aware, Full Box will be taking over this channel tomorrow. Yes. So please tune in tomorrow as well. Foolbox is working on a uh, automation puzzle game uh, in Godot, and it's super cool. Um, tons, tons to learn from Foolbox. <laughs> What's up, Stinkies? It's Mize. Hello. <laughs> hey, Mize. <laughs> How's it going? Trev Trevron, hello, hello. Hello. First time meeting you, so what's up? <laughs> Uh, Arya says, cool stuff. I am a Godot main too. <laughs> Godot main. Nice. nice. Godot nerds. Block shop. Yep. Which is also on stream, on Steam. And there's a demo. So you can go play it right now. Block shop on Steam. Block shop. Mm -mm, block shop. How's it going over here? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, I mean, we've been yapping for the most part. Uh, excuse me, I've drawn a whole. Well, so not a whole. I've been bush, yapping but... for the most part. <laughs> <laughs> I'm drawing a beautiful planter here, you guys. <laughs> I don't know what he's yapping about. <laughs> but look, I did the thing. Celine drew a thing, and I, then I, I did the I thing. I drew a whole Godot nerd. Look, you and, know? And, then, and, then, and then I put it in there. Look, look, <laughs> look. Wait for it. Hold. Very cute. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. And something crashed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nothing to see here, guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. Key shape collision. Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's my bad. That's fine. We were working on a thing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm stuck in this divide between grinding a dough and making games, or grinding web development, and it's plethora of frameworks. I am a stay-at-home dad. I can freelance web dev, not so much game dev. Mm. Mm. Yeah. It's a difficult position, isn't it? Um, game dev is, is pretty difficult to to get into from a, from a working perspective, I think. Right? Uh, we're we're currently doing the the hobbyist route, right? Yeah. So we are working on a commercial project, but we're very much working on our free time. Um, yeah. So we yeah. We, there's we, no plans of like joining, like finding a job in game dev or anything like no, that. No, no. It is very much uh, just something we do because we just enjoy it very yeah. much. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we do have full time jobs. Mm sides from this but you know i i hear on the on the grapevine that godot's kind of popping off so it might be a really good skill to have yeah 
Knowing some good dome. Mm hmm. Should I learn some good dome? You should totally learn some good dome. And then I could just retire, go I, to the beach. I mean, you, can, I, you can make the games. I already know all about texture wrecks. <laughs> <laughs> and booleans. And booleans and enums. I feel like I'm set. You got this. Whenever there's a there's a problem, you know, I can just say if problem happen, don't do problem, you know, and then easy and then <laughs> fix <Fixed>. easy. <laughs> yes, boomerangs exactly <laughs> the boomerangs. I don't need money. Wife works, but it'd be nice to bring in some extra income. I really enjoy game dev uh, with Godot, though, so it's a crossroad. Yeah. I would say don't give up on it if you if you really enjoy it. Mm. Um. Yeah. I mean, there are the thing with game dev is everything is super long term, right? Like making a game that's good enough takes time not just developing your skills, but then making the whole game. It's, it takes a long time. Even as so like, rough. like for us, like we, we consider this to be an incredibly simple game. Yeah. But I mean, again, we only work on this a uh, couple hours a week. We don't work on it like all day, every day, mm -hmm. but it's taking a, taken us about a year to get to where we are. Yeah. Hopefully we're releasing it in November. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, we, we didn't really think it would take as long as it did. Initially, before we started. Yeah, I think. yeah, yeah. Once we got into it, we're like, oh, okay, yeah, this is going to take some time. Yeah. Um. Um, yeah, but there are certainly... There are certainly different avenues other than, like, making a, a full-fledged... Uh, purchasable product and putting it on Steam, Absolutely, for example. Yeah. Uh, you could look into web games, for example. So you can make a way smaller, um, a way, way smaller game um, that you could potentially publish to something like Crazy Games or, or there's another big one that I can't think of the name. Has a yellow logo. Nothing is not coming to you. Um, Pokey is another one. Um, they're not like completely open, but you can you can submit your games and then they're up for review, uh, similar to to Steam, and you can get a little bit of income from that. Um, and Godot is very, very capable when it comes to web build, especially in the new 4.3 version. Uh, you can now do single threaded web exports, which allow you to uh, upload your games to websites like that. So you could explore that. It, it, it would be, it, it would be probably lower when it comes to income, but it's also lower when it comes to the quality um or, or the, or like the, the level of the time investment yeah needed. the amount of content the the amount of polish bar is lower on a website like that because you know the games are meant for someone to play for five ten minutes and then move on to the next game and then move on to the next game right so might be something worth exploring It goes faster with experience, but there is always more polish that's possible. Yeah. Yeah. For for every task, for every post-it, I turn green. I usually add three more. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a like a hydra. Yep. Yep.
sure, I have a great uh, game idea, a couple actually, but I keep flip-flopping back and forth and I think it's hurting me programming-wise. Yeah. Yeah, I hear ya. Sometimes it's, sometimes it's rough. I think definitely like write all of your ideas down. And um, if there are like very different ideas for like, sort of different ideas for different games, maybe you can try just making the absolute smallest prototype of the game loop idea. Uh, and that will get you a feel for once you're kind of trying it, trying that out, you can kind of see if there's one which kind of calls to you more mm -hmm. to, to work on maybe. Mm. And then you probably learn a lot of stuff along the way as well. Like we made a lot of different little prototypes, right? Before we settled on... <laughs> Love a good cat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we worked on a ton of projects that never saw the light of day. Yeah, but it was good to keep But we, you know, we had the idea and we thought the idea was good. That's what we tried. Mm -hmm. We started doing it, right? So sometimes even just starting something and it, it's okay to, it's okay to abandon your project sometimes. Yes. But it's, it's always good to try and see how it feels. There's our oven. Currently on the shelf, but Why don't, don't worry about on that. The it, shelf? It, it, listen, it, it, Olive uh, can't even reach <laughs> that far. Are the cats putting the chicken in the <laughs> oven? What's going on here? Temporary. So, I know that it took me like an hour to do this, but it's usually very quick. I was just yapping too much. We just made sure, sure, a sure, custom sure. resource. We set up like the name and the action, which we said adds chicken to the ingredients list. Then we instantiated the item scene and gave it the chicken custom resource. And that's it. It, it creates the description automatically. It adds it to the shop menu automatically. Um, so yeah, custom resources, they're badass. Use them. Trust me. <laughs> Trust him. He's a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all the advice and kind words. Uh, really makes me want to commit. Do it. Do it. Do it. Do it. And again, you know, being part of a, like uh, just a nice, um, unwholesome community where you can share your progress and ask questions, I mm -hmm, think you'll mm -hmm. find yourself even more motivated to keep going. Mm hmm. I saw a couple of games on cool math games, actually. It's easier than you would think. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, uh, one, it's a big market. Web games get a lot of traffic. Yeah. And because they're usually smaller games that people play, again, for like 10 minutes and then move on, it means that they're always hungry for more. Like, people will be adding games to those websites forever because people just like new stuff to, to experience. So the demand is there. La demanda. And remember, no matter what language engine, whatever you learn, the general problem solving and algorithm knowledge are useful everywhere. Very true, very, very true. Um, I started with Game Maker and a lot of what I learned was directly um, translated to Godot. <laughs> what are we laughing about? <laughs> I don't know. Just trying to make you laugh, maybe. Maybe. Um, yeah, things like collisions, uh, movement, um, like sprites and sprite animations and stuff. These are all concepts that you learn and are applicable in every engine. Completely agree. <clears throat> what is that shelf even made of to hold it? Can we trust the nerd that says things like uwu and nya? I've never said that, ever. I don't know what you're talking about. 
I don't know what you're talking about. I've I've never ever. He has never in his life. <laughs> <laughs> the emote. DJ Dizzy, hello, hello. Oh, what a name. Is there any coding language beyond using GDScript that would help for someone new to game development and coding? Yeah, so as Temtic and Panacota pointed out, C Sharp is very, very widely used in the game dev space. Um, and Godot supports that as well. Uh, I've never used it myself, so I can't vouch for the experience, but as you can see in chat, a lot of people love it. Remember, I downloaded the clips. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so why does this say full game? That shouldn't say full game. Don't worry about that right now. So the oven we want to put in a thing, though. So you want to encapsulate it. And I'm I'm to use the current things that I have access to to build it. Is that right? Yeah, and then I'll have to make the skins. Yes. So we have this. So yeah, you should have different parts uh, that I export. Yeah. I guess. So I could. Um, Buttermilk Pancake says, I made a Flappy Bird mock-up with Godot while learning it, and it hooked me to the process. I just fell off because I'm thinking about the kids and making the most money, so I think worrying about just making money is hurting me. Y'all help yeah. bring some light to my conflict. I appreciate that. Sometimes external input really helps. I like perspectives. Yeah, of course, and I mean, especially with kids, it's totally understandable, like, your concerns about yeah. being able to bring in some income. But yeah, that doesn't mean that you can't just you can't do something that you enjoy while also making a little bit yeah um, of extra money. And that's definitely something that we think about from time to time because yeah. it is very much our dream to make indie games for a living. That's what we want. Um, but I think it's just the reality that it it takes time. It takes it, time. In in investment on your part. That's just the way it is. The nature of these projects. Yeah. So, yeah. But just because it's difficult doesn't mean it's not possible. True. Look at that practical face. <laughs> and look at the smug. <laughs> hey, Symbol, how's it going? Hello. Oh, you guys. <laughs> Oh, Maka screams at me. It is almost her dinner time. But it's not her dinner time yet. Not yet. Makuku, you must await. The marathon, not a, not a race. Yeah. 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 Is the game meeting your expectations? Uh, so far, I would say yes. When it comes to the game design, it is miles ahead of anything we had at the start yeah like when we started this project it was supposed to be like a third of what we have <laughs> and yeah. we just kept adding to it we we are kind of over scoping it a little bit but i think yeah. prudently yeah we I, just I we think. wanted it to be better i guess <laughs> yeah. that's just the way it goes um outside of that in like yeah what's up you have to wait just she, like she has to wait like 30 10 more minutes. minutes just 10 minutes and i'll give her time. she's yelling in the background um when it comes to like marketing metrics again it it, it has the our wildest expectations i would say yes we we had all we had set the the bar incredibly low because we did not want to get our hopes up with our first commercial project. We were like, this is probably not gonna go great. You know, yeah. not many people are gonna see it. Mm -hmm. Like we're just doing it because we because we want to and because it's fun. You know, we're, we're not gonna stress about the numbers too much. Like you know, we're just setting setting very low expectations. Mm. Um, and I feel like the expectations have just been like 
blown away every time. Big time. Looks cute. I love the pixel art for this game. Thank you. Thank you very much. Granger, how goes it, nerds? Hey, Hello, Granger. so good to see you. Maka treat. I'm gonna give her dinner in, in five minutes, but yeah, we can do a little treat later. How am I gonna do this one? So, why, why, why is it not letting me resize it? Any plans for mobile or just PC? I, I mean, a lot of people have told us that they would love to see this as a mobile game. Um, and while I feel like I personally agree with the sentiment, I don't think we're looking into doing that. At least, at, at least right now, I think we're we're just focusing on getting this out on Steam, um, and then we'll take a look at any other ports that we could try to do that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Focuses are on. Um, why can I not resize this? I don't understand what's happening. Focuses are on Steam. We'll start with that. And then uh, we're going to try for Switch. Although, who knows how that's going to go. We're going to uh, try. We're going to try. We're going to try. And then we'll let you guys know how that goes. <laughs> yeah. And then mobile. Like, again, if the game does really well we'd consider mobile? It's just, we know nothing about the mobile games market, so yeah. we feel a little hesitant to just want to push for that. Yeah. Um, right now. Because we definitely don't want to do like an freemium thing with ads and stuff. No. That's not a direction It would be a paid go. game. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which, don't know if that would work in the in the mobile market, you know. We just don't have the the know-how. Mm. Uh, but pretty cool thing with with Steam is um, is the Steam Deck. So even if we don't manage to get it on on the Switch, on the Switch, it, it feels it works, really good. It to works have it. on the Steam yeah. Deck. Yeah, it, it was honestly when I saw you play it on the Steam Deck, I was like. This is amazing. This is incredible. We made a game. Yeah. We made a real game. <laughs> it was so cool. Do you have a demo? We do. Mm -hmm. um, how do you put it up? Was it with project? Uh, oh, right. Yeah. So, project. We do have a demo. There we go. Um, you can give that a little go. We're hoping for the full release to be this year in November. Mm -hmm. Everything goes according to plan, more we'll or less. We'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. Again, we're so, we're still of the mind um, in working on this game in a very close looped manner, so that we're not going to be um, just adding multiple features at once. Right? We're working like. Um, we're trying to be mindful of if, like you say, with the VIP system, we want to incorporate. Yeah. If we don't get to that, we don't get to that, but we don't half start it so that we can't launch the yeah. game, you know. And that's okay. If we release the game without everything we want at release, we'll just keep working on it after release and we'll do some patches and, and that's okay. Um, that's another part of game dev that Especially when you start working on a commercial product, um, a commercial project, you learn that you you do have to make sacrifices, whether that's in scope, in polish, in, in features. Like, if you want to finish it, you will likely have to make some tough calls. You know. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And that's okay. That's okay. Was the idea to have two shelves similar to this? Um, I mean, I ended it right above the microwave, but it's just whatever's gonna look good. I also did have it aligned with a cabinet at the bottom. 
So like right now you have it in between two cabinets. Right. I did have it aligned to a cabinet. Okay, okay. So, like this. And then we can move the other stuff. Yeah. I'm not sure where we're going to put the locker. We'll figure it out. <laughs> we'll figure it out. It'll be Next. Fine. What's this I'm seeing? Nerds taking over Twitch? <laughs> we are. Hey, next. Look at us. Look at us go. Go. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Nice. I'm wait, so sorry. Wait. No. <laughs> So sorry. The <laughs> 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 uh. demo costs twenty dollars. It doesn't. It doesn't. <laughs> no. Hmm. The microwave here as well. It's such a it's such a peaceful stream today. Right. Right. And the I feel like I can breathe. Yeah, like the I air. I don't know why, but it's just different. The air is so clear in the stream yeah. here. I like it. It's very nice. It's not that like usual fog or whatever it is. Yeah. There's no wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so calm. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yes. Too quiet. <laughs> Such disappointment. That gamer is sus. <laughs> Many Sag. Wait, wait, wait. Maybe. Maybe, maybe no one from the Godot team is here right now. So let's just. Wait, wait, wait. Shh. Shh. Wait, wait. Shh. King this time. <laughs> A sneaky one. <laughs> oh my goodness. We're sorry. I don't know what you're talking about. Nothing happened. <laughs> Before stream gets terminated. <laughs> <laughs> I just get like a random pop-up in Godot. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> A little Discord ping. Can you not? <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. <laughs> I do like the the whole like cabinet going all the way up to the shelf. I don't dislike it necessarily. Is there a butt coming? But you know it is crowded, like you're like you were saying. Yeah. Because here we're gonna have um Full uh, box, enjoy your food. Have a good one, full box. We're gonna have the locker here, supposedly. Yeah. So this cabinet would have to move. Well, I would I would get rid of that cabinet like Goodbye. Yeah, out of here. yeah, out we of could here. do that. Completely out of here. You put some of the plates, if you want, on the space above the microwave or the cups. Yes, yes. You don't need, we also don't need all of them because you already have some on that shelf. 
but if the, you the wanna, coffee machine could be here the coffee machine could just be on its own just hanging out just hanging around you can just hang out yeah just hanging around yeah uh, and i think you will be okay so we just have this cabinet yeah which we could again we could tie this cabinet to the shelf so when you update the shelf decoration it, yeah it could it, just change it, this it just means that i will need to do those pieces again for every single set which is sorry how do you mean because that is the only one that exists right now and it doesn't match anything right because the base counter and shelves are different the the base counter sure. is white and the base shelves are brown uh, but maybe that's okay so so you're saying we do this we can still leave it like that if you like it in those colors that can be the base color i'm saying the color of the cabinet doesn't need to directly match the shelf it'll just change alongside it but it doesn't need to be the same exact color right so like if we do this yeah but i mean i still have to do a bunch of different colors yeah because yeah, yeah. i'm yeah. that's the only one that exists right sure. now so. yeah but i'm saying if we do this but just hypothetical you thought that a black cabinet would look better with mm -hmm. the with a beige shelf we could we could do that still yeah. i mean i think for that i'll probably just do a bunch of colors of wood yeah and then you know people can yeah or they just pick their can own. Yeah. decorate to their heart's content mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. next says i've seen some updates on the demo anything relevant um bug squishing we we pushed a hot fix yeah so maybe that's what you saw there was a, a very interesting bug <laughs> <laughs> that unfortunately we found on a YouTube video of someone playing the game when the game crashed. Yeah, it just, the game just died and yeah. it was so niche. Yeah. Like the, it was such a specific set of circumstances that you're like, holy, how many of these kind of things are out there, mm. you know? Yeah. It, it, it happened specifically when the the day was about to end and you clicked the toaster yeah but then the cafe would close as the bread was flying so it would land on top of olive's head and give her a halo yeah then she would just have a piece of bread on top of her head and then when you went to open the cafe again, it would crash. The game, the game just could not compute the halo. Okay, I need to give Maka her dinner because she is now, she's circling me like a shark. Yeah. I shall be right back, nerds. Please, be kind. <laughs> now I want that bug. It, it was quite funny. <laughs> Maybe I should have. Uh... Just made it so that the game didn't crash, but didn't actually fix the bug, you know? Maybe it would have been funnier. Um. <laughs> um. And this, this is the latest feature that we've been working on, which probably won't make it to the demo at least for now, we may consider it for the um, for next fest in October. Um, but yeah, we've been working on this recipe book where you, you can track your ingredient combos and you can get one time rewards uh, when you discover a new recipe. Um, been spending a lot of time <laughs> getting this as, as juicier as possible um, and quite happy where it is right now maybe at one point have a secret that you can have a toast line on the head <laughs> yeah yeah for sure like even when we're doing this so when the cafe is not open you can just spam it uh, which is currently broken by the way behind the shelves i need to fix that but maybe i could could just add a collision box 
on Olive. So if the toast lands on Olive, it actually bounces off of her. That'd be funny. I'm back. Welcome back. What you doing with my toast? <laughs> I'm back and I got a cup of smoothie with me. Ooh, what kind of smoothie? <gasps> oh, I want a smoothie now. Me too. Oh, I want a milkshake. I'm just saying. <laughs> if I get you a milk milkshake, can you can I ask you to change this sprite just a little bit? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Anything you want. Lean <laughs> <laughs> this back on how I am. We're all back. I miss a couple streams and look at that progress. It looks great. <laughs> nice. Thank you. Yeah, we're super happy with how it's yeah. going. And again, it it as part of the design for this game there's there's not a ton of depth but we're trying to add as much as possible when it comes to breadth we're, we're doing horizontal we're going wide yeah we're going wide <laughs> we're taking a wide <laughs> this stance. is a wide game <laughs> <laughs> we're we're trying to add as much horizontal progression as possible and the recipe system is a good example of that. It doesn't really touch like this whole UI and, and the rewards that you can get. It doesn't touch the core gameplay at all. It's just something extra for the player to to do and like almost like achievement hunt. <laughs> yeah, because the main gameplay mechanic is quite simple and quite straightforward. You're, you know, I, I also see this as a game. I, I mean, basically, this game started out as a game for me, kind of what, you know, cause that I wanted to play. Mm -hmm. And so I've always kept that in the back of my mind, you know, even though we've now expanded into a proper commercial project. Yeah. You know, it's I, I always think um, with these kinds of games that are like um, quite small, quite simple, I mean, uh, I, I really wanted to have the customization in there because I thought that is just fun and it's always nice when a game lets you change everything. Mm -hmm. um, even if the options are going to be limited, you know, you're not going to be able to have every wallpaper under the sun, but I'm going to make as many as possible. Um, I always just thought, yeah, you know, this is a great game to add that, that collectionist. Yeah. Um, aspect to it, whether that is collecting all of the decoration items, all of the cat outfits, um, collect all the recipes, all the achievements. You know, I think there's for someone who likes to complete games, there will be a lot to do. Yeah. Is you know, I I think you know you you shouldn't. Hopefully, you shouldn't be able to complete absolutely everything in like an hour. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Hopefully, it'll take you at least four or five hours to complete everything. Hopefully, Hopefully. by the time not right now, but you know when we actually finish it <laughs> and, and add everything we want to add. Captain Coder, hello nerds. Hey, Cap. Good to see you. The dopamine of claiming that present. And that is exactly why we're focusing so much on the yeah. polish of things. Um, we, we really, as small as it is, we want it to be the absolute, absolute highest quality that we can make it. Yes. And we're kind of prioritizing quality over quantity, I think. Yeah. Um, so we'd rather have a smaller game that looks like that we can say we absolutely did our best. This is the best that it can look with our current skill set then just have a lot of half-finished assets and things. So that is kind of how we're, we're doing it. And it's, I think, for me, it helps so much with the motivation of just seeing it look so good. Big time. Yeah. And uh, what I'm working on right now, I know it seems kind of rogue that I'm just doing a giant bush, but <laughs> 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 you're like, what does that have to do with cat cafes? But I'm gonna get some water. Be right. um, I am quite adamant in having at least one proper cutscene in the game. Um, this is quite big, quite challenging. I never 
this is the first time I'm do I'm gonna try attempt to you know we're attempting to put something like this together but I want to be able to when you enter the cafe you kind of see this shot from the outside uh you know maybe while you're paused like the leaves of like the thing are like kind of swishing and like the wind or something and it's like you know you got the nice music and everything and the cafe is closed and when you open the cafe you kind of see a shadow that turns the sign to open and the door op and opens the door and then you go into the cafe mm -hmm. so i want i really uh, this doesn't enhance the gameplay in any way but i yeah. think i really think the game will be better for it in terms of just nice visual aesthetics yeah. so and i am putting the effort into doing this when in reality there are other things i could be doing that are probably more useful for the game sure but again you're, you're ahead of me so i am ahead of you yeah. right now yeah um so i do want to spend a little bit on this because i think it will be yeah. really valuable in the end and i think that's inevitably something you have to consider if you're planning to sell your game yeah the you're going to have to make the ultimate decision of how much you're going to be charging for your product right and when we spend all this time trying to elevate the the quality the polish in the game we're hoping that that will it'll make you feel like you got yeah. value out of your yeah, purchase yeah exactly yeah like it was worth the money you know, that you spent yeah. on it yeah but you could see that there was a lot of time and effort into creating a well packaged and well polished product yeah Now that you talked about horizontal progress, I have a suggestion, but I'll send in Discord to explain better. Sure. Do it. We love suggestions. <laughs> we, we've we included a lot of suggestions from our chatters um, mm -hmm. that have suggested things um, either in the stream or through playing. Um, so, you know, for anyone new to hanging out with us, please feel free to share your thoughts and who knows? Yeah. You might, you might even give us a, an idea that makes it into the game. Mm-hmm. And we've not mentioned it today, but every cat that's in the game right now, it's actually uh, based off of real pets. Yeah. Either from present or past. Um, they're all based off of real pets. So. And Fullbox's cat yeah. is there. That's true. Yeah, Willow. They'll be going in soon yeah. into the actual game. They're going to be one of the most interactive cats. That's true. Willow, Willow is going to be pretty, pretty huge. Yeah. Big plans for Willow. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the details, so it's worth it. Anything you can do to make the player care for the cafe, the better. Exactly. That's, that's definitely how I feel. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's Kado! <laughs> oh my gosh, Maka is Maka zooming! Zoom. <laughs> Wait, if I move, will we see her zoom back? I'm just gonna move for a little bit, see if we can see her zoom back. I think she's in the tub. Is she in the tub? I think Maka's in the tub. She has a circuit where she runs into the bathroom and jumps in the bathtub. Yeah. Then meows dramatically. And then she jumps out and zooms back in. Oh, there oh. she came. <laughs> you zooming? Are you zooming? <laughs> Are you fast? Crazy cat. Did you have your bathtub drama time? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Forgot. What was he going to say? Sonic that Mako. plays games. How's it going? <laughs> What are we doing today? A little bit of everything. Mm. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. I mean, I'm just drawing this bush. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, a lot of yapping on my part. Obviously, he was talking about the game and, and how we went about making it. Um, and then we also added this oven. This totally fully operational oven that lets you have chicken. <laughs> <laughs> the 
<laughs> Maybe. Unless you have chicken. Actually, I didn't test it. Let's see if it gives us chicken. Oh my gosh, this cat. Cat's going absolutely <laughs> crazy. My goodness. She has oh my the God, destroy. She has the post poop <laughs> zooms. Oh my God! Not on the desk, Maka. <laughs> Ah, no, 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 get out of here with your zooms. <laughs> She's just causing chaos. <laughs> no need to shame her like that. <laughs> he exposed her toilet behaviors. <laughs> Imagine that. Um. <laughs> um Wait, yeah. has, has anyone seen chicken? We're looking for chicken. Oh, there it is. It worked. It worked? <laughs> I'm so glad that my cat is not the only one who has post poop zoom. <laughs> it's like they're just afraid of what they just released into the world, so they yeah. just they, they run. Oh my, my goodness. God. She's just She's going crazy. She's gonna run into the window. I just realized that this is the perfect opportunity with so many nerds here. So many nerds we've never met before. We have a ton of ingredients. Oh, yes! At the moment, but we want more, right? We want more! We also have a list of recipes here. So this is like specific ingredient combos that you get an extra value for stacking. So if you, if you do, in any order, uh, a burger and cheese, you get a cheeseburger combo and you get a little extra, right? So... More food. Give us, give us thoughts here. You know, what are your favorite <laughs> um, sandwich ingredients? Do you have a recipe, your go-to recipe for sandwiches? Tell us about it, because we want to put it in our game. We already have a couple things. On the list to add, we have tuna, we have hot sauce. Yeah. Um, we have steak. Oh yeah, someone really wants to see some steak in the game. Pesto. That Ooh. is very interesting. I actually kind of love that. I feel like it would be doable. It could be. It could be doable. And it, it yeah, it's you can put it like on the on the higher end. Yeah. Pineapple. I'm down. Guys, I'm down. No. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> Stop. Get some help. Peanut butter. We yeah. have considered peanut butter. Um, although at the moment we have all savory ingredients. So just having peanut butter in the middle there would be weird. However, we also have a, a plan. Hopefully we get to, to have an ice cream sandwich mode like a power-up that turns everything into sweet ingredients and fruit and stuff. That doesn't mean that I have to draw, you know, every single ingredient again or anything, you know, it's just, that's fine. No, no, yes. it would just be like, like 20 or 50 or something. <laughs> <laughs> Pulled pork with coleslaw. Coleslaw Ooh. is interesting. Coleslaw, okay, hold up, hold up. These, these, these are great, chat. Um, I made a note. There's a Google sheet with the with that stuff, if you can find it. I'm just gonna throw some stuff here and then we'll organize it. So we have. Wait, we had, we had, we had, we had. Pesto, love that. Pulled pork. Coleslaw is very interesting. Coleslaw could be a recipe, right? Because coleslaw is... Um, what goes into coleslaw? Things. Basic, basic <laughs> coleslaw ingredients. I don't think we have the ingredients for coleslaw. I don't, we don't have carrot, I know that. We don't, we don't have cabbage no. either. But we could add some of these, perhaps. Right? And then you add mayo. Is it mayo? Right? 
right? I guess. Cabbage, carrot, mayo. Yeah. So that could be a recipe. Mm. I like that. I like the thought of that. What else do we have? Tofu. 100%. Oh, tofu. We were talking about tofu the other Ooh, day. That might be a bit difficult, though, because we already have the issue with the butter looking like the mayo, but... I'm going to add pineapple here, but don't tell Selena. Hey. Um, kimchi. Nice. I mean, you have to keep in mind that some of these might be yeah not not possible to draw for me yeah. in a way that makes them immediately discernible what they are. Mm, they need to be recognizable. Yeah. On in not many pixels, yeah. it is a challenge. That is my. That is why some of the the, the amount of ingredients is very limited because it needs to be immediately recognizable. Yeah. So there's some things I just think we won't be able to do because they won't look like anything. Yeah. So How's it going, Wallaber? I say, uh, well, it's Tuner Nerds on the big stage. Yeah. Hey, yeah. <laughs> We're taking over. How's We're it going, Wallaber? Nerds, highly recommend if you're interested in Godot development. You should give Wallaber a follow. Um, their game looks so cool. Um, I, I, I know for a fact that Wallaber will be an inspiration um, on, on one, at least one of our future projects. We will be trying to recreate some of the awesomeness that he's done <laughs> uh, with his... Um, his racing game. It looks absolutely incredible. It looks so good. Uh, get good, Celine. <laughs> mushrooms. I need to get good. Yeah, you're right. Mushrooms. It's definitely a, a skill issue. On my part. I think I got everything. <laughs> Give us pineapple. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite sandwich these days is just peanut butter and sweet onion. Interesting. Interesting. Russian salad. Yes. Same principle as coleslaw, but yummier. What, what's the difference, Mais? In Argentina, we call Russian salad like a, a version of a potato salad with carrots, essentially. Okay. I don't know if that's the same for mm. you. Yeah, potato again, it's like, it's an interesting ingredient. It's like, like potato, mayo, um, mm. carrots. I don't know, I hated it as a kid. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> cabbage rolls. I literally just ate some cabbage rolls. Mm -hmm. I've never heard that term, cabbage rolls. Cabbage rolls. Yeah, that looks delicious. Yep. <laughs> Love it. Oh, yeah, I'm I peace. think I've had these. I think I've had these. That looks delicious. Carrots, potatoes, tuna, or ham, mayo. Okay, so potatoes. We don't have carrots. We could add carrots. Th those would be well, recognizable. Well, are there going to be a lot of sandwiches that contain carrots as an ingredient? That makes sense, though. Yeah, maybe not. We do have to be careful. There's only so many ingredients we can add before it starts being overwhelming to the player. Right? Yes. So... Again, we're just putting down ideas, but then we have to make some decisions on, on what makes it. Yeah. Poutine. Oh, I love poutine. <laughs> poutine totally fits in a cafe, right? Yeah, 100%. I think so. Can I draw that? Is that something I can draw, though, is the question. If we add poutine, we, we need to add full box as a customer. And they just come in dancing. Yeah. Waiting for their poutine. Are there eggs already? Of course. We do have eggs. I took. I take special pride in the egg sprite that I made. Um, where are eggs? We'll find an egg. There we go. Have this bad boy. Johnson, hello. Hello. <laughs> Needs ensquanchification. <laughs> ensquanchification. <laughs> always. Always. Always, always. need some, some extra squanch. 
<laughs> How's it going, Johnson? Hope you had a fantastic time yesterday, Johnson. Uh, taking over the, the Godot channel. Taking over. Johnson was going over um, a lot of their past games and stuff. Oh, it was yeah. very interesting. Mm -mm. Huge collection. Like, we need to catch up. We got two games. Listen, when we finish this game, we're going to participate in at least 23 game jams. What? No. And just have a ton of games. Vetoed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we have all these ideas. We need we need to do the thing. Why does it take so long? It, it just takes time. It takes so long. <laughs> <laughs> game jams are really addictive exactly you gotta you gotta just do them in moderation yeah yeah i'll allow two two game jams two game jams okay okay let me emit the oven added oven item commit push And again, for everyone watching, if there's anything about the game that you're curious about on, on how it was implemented and whatnot, um, please just ask away. There are no dumb questions. Only dumb answers, which I will provide. <laughs> Do not worry. Do not worry. Shrimp sandwich. There are actually some shrimps. There, yeah. We got some oh, shrimps in the game. We have a prawn, but a you know, prawn. same, same. Yeah. I mean, I call them <laughs> shrimps, but yes. Yes, prawn. We do have, we do have that. Um, yeah, we have a recipe that's like prawn roll or something. Yeah. Because uh, that's the challenge, right? We're adding all of these um, different ingredients, but then we're trying to find a way to combine a lot of them into recipes. Um, and you know, we can't, we can't really make it up. Because the whole point is that they're, the player would be exploring a real recipe and then discovering it. Yeah. And it has to so. at least make sense, you know, something yeah. that you've heard of. Yeah. Or that, like, you, if you Google it, you get a result straight away because it's like something well known mm. somewhere. Mm hmm, mm hmm. Okay, let's make a new folder. Let's call it Locker. We've been meaning to add this thing for so long. I drew this months ago, didn't I? Where can I find it? It's in the upgrades. The locker? No, it's in the level. Level. I think I made a folder for it. Locker, yes. We're gonna pull in some sprites. Tuna roll. Hmm, yeah. Yeah. So. Again, tuna is a re uh, an ingredient that we've been talking about since the inception of this game. But our question is, how do we make it so it doesn't look like vomit? <laughs> like vomit, like like cat regurgitation <laughs> in not many pixels, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think we have like 13 by 13. <laughs> it's a challenge. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> Abuka says, I'm hungry I'm now. hungry. Uh, there's always two sides, right? Uh, I'm hoping they're saying that because of the tuna sandwiches and not what I said. <laughs> you never know. Make it like it's in the can. Hmm. Oh, I understand. What, what do you mean? Like how it comes in the can, like like packed, like not in the can, but like what it would look like in the can. So it's just like a like a, a cube or, or like a circular round disc. Hmm. Kind of looks like a log slice. Yeah. 
We'd have to try it and see. Yeah. Definitely, we will try it. We will try it. Because I want tuna. Tuna makes sense. Yeah, I, so I love tuna. Sandwiches. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we're ditching this cabinet. Yeah. Get wrecked. Get wrecked. Destroyed. Gone. Gone. Will the cats just randomly supply your shop with tuna? <laughs> what kind of cat cafe doesn't have tuna though? You know what I mean? Or is yeah. it is it there's no tuna because the cats eat it all? It uh, never it never makes it to the shop floor. That makes a lot of sense actually. So from a lore pers perspective, we shouldn't have tuna. <laughs> that makes just too much sense. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Or draw like those gorgeous tuna fillets. Yeah, that was my second thought. And then my only worry with that is that it will look too similar to the salmon. To the slice of salmon that we have. We do have. Yeah. Yeah. We have salmon. Oh, I mean the tuna. I did do it in right, there. Right, you right, have right. The, the tuna is the pink, the, yeah, the this pinker, one. darker, pinker version of the of the salmon. Yeah. So pretty much the same, but that like deeper, yeah, darker pink. Yeah. It. I mean, it could work. It's just that that's not will when it, you think of a, a tuna sandwich. That's not what you're thinking. Yeah. Like, right? will it will it be recognizable enough? Is my yeah. my question. Granted, when you think of a salmon sandwich. You d you're not thinking about the the raw salmon either, and we're doing that, so yeah, maybe that's okay. Yeah, you know, maybe. suspend disbelief. You gotta type of thing. You gotta suspend that is yeah. You gotta do it. So. Gorgeous tuna fillets. Yeah, yeah. Would sushi work in the cafe? Uh, I guess. I guess that's kind of what we're talking about right now. At the moment, it, they certainly look like they're sushi ingredients but the game's all about sandwiches right so it would be a sushi sandwich, <laughs> <laughs> sushi sandwich. which i'm not it'll end up on toast <laughs> it, it will be sushi on toast the, the, yeah, <laughs> sushi yeah. On toast. which i've never tried so it could, it could be great be good. it could be great sushi is a sandwich in itself oh now that's controversial now that's controversial. You think? I don't even want to get into it because we'll be here all, all night. <laughs> Is a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> um. So. <laughs> it didn't answer my question. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. It's a rabbit hole. It's a rabbit hole. Sushi will come in DLC. Well, we didn't do it on purpose necessarily, but you'll see that the the title of the game is Super Cat Cafe Colon Sandwich Rush, right? <laughs> so I think we subconsciously positioned ourselves to to leave it open, you know, for the future that we may have different installments of the super cat cafe yeah you know we have super cat cafe sandwich rush we could have super cat cafe dating nick simulator sure <laughs> yeah we could have that we could have super cat cafe sushi bar we could have sushi super cat bar. cafe pizza express no, no can't again can't, can't do that can't call it pizza can't express. pizza express pizza pizza bon appetit <laughs> <laughs> it's a uh, something. Why can't I think of a word? Word. I don't know. <laughs> Super Cat Cafe pizza. Period. <laughs> Period. <laughs> <laughs> Just pizza. Mage Cafe. <laughs> no, that's, that's a different type of cafe. It'd be Super Super Made Cafe. <laughs> Pizza pause. That's good. Pizza pause. Bread is like pasta. Big Mac is alternating layers of bread, minced meat, tomato sauce, and vegetables. Big Mac is lasagna. 
This is this is going into some pirate <laughs> software realms right here. I I I feel like was it burgers? I I've heard Thor talk about something lasagna being something. <laughs> burgers? Or a sandwich? Was a lasagna a sandwich? Or was it a burger? I can't remember. It's pasta. Oh, that's looking so good. Do you think so? Yes. It's looking great. Very lush. Yeah. This game has potential to be freaky fun in multiplayer. We've got a, we've gotten asked about multiplayer. Yeah. Um, you are not the first person to say that. I don't think I I'm allowed to comment on that because it's mm. you're the one that could speak to it. Goblin behavior. We could consider a post-release update that adds local multiplayer. Right? So you just connect okay. your second controller and Nick just walks in. <gasps> you can play as Nick. Would you guys like that? That'd be quite cool. And then you're you're just yeah, I mean, it could be interesting, but you're, you'd be building separate sandwiches, right? Yeah. Which could be fine. That would be amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think... think we would ever do, like, network multiplayer, like, online multiplayer. Right. But local, very doable, right? Okay, if you say so. I mean, kind of. <laughs> oh, no. Keep I still have PTSD playing over with my wife <laughs> <laughs> yeah i hear you i hear you i think it would be cute could be cute could be cute could be cute could be pretty cute uh okay so for the locker we have this here so we would have this here now i assume the locker is not supposed to be this big right it would be covered by the thing what well the door is so it's twice as it's as big as that sprite that even including the empty space because the door opens no 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 no. i'm saying like height wise is it supposed to be like this or it like can, this? it can go lower if you want it to it's just how depends how much you want to show it should be a little taller than olive like imagine like a locker right like you'd imagine sure. that it'd be a as sure, tall sure. as you are a little bit taller. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, I need to place this not here. So let's go here. Let's add a sprite 2D. We're going to pull in that. And we're going to do that. Move it here. Okay. That's behind a thing. Okay, so it'd be something like that. And the cabinets will move like so. That one's pushed out, doesn't matter. And then we're going to have... Um, Steam has a system to turn local multiplayer into remote multiplayer, right? Oh, I've heard about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Remote play, I think it's called. Very true. Very true. Might be onto something. I wonder how feasible peer to peer would be. I heard I see some other great Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Like we we definitely want to delve into online multiplayer at one point. Um you know, me and Celine love playing games together. Yeah. Especially, you know, things like um minecraft minecraft yeah like survival-ish building games like that um so i i'd consider our game making journey failed if, if we never make anything yeah. that can work <laughs> if we never make a, a game that we can both play <laughs> yeah yeah same so uh we'll be exploring it but i don't think we'll be exploring that for this game
So now we have the door that sits over the 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 back. And the reason why we're doing this, and the the locker has like two slices, is that we want to close and open the locker, and then there'll be stuff inside the locker. Yeah. Uh, like upgrades and stuff. So we're gonna go over to the animation. And we're gonna say that it has two horizontal frames. It will just slice it automatically. And we can position that. So now if we toggle the frames, we can now open and close. The door just needs to move here. Yeah, there we go. And we can open and close. The idea is the player can will just be able to click the locker to open and close it, which should add a bit of a bit of juice as well. Ideally, again, we'll see how far we get, but the end goal is to make it so that when the player clicks virtually anything in the cafe, it will react to the player, right? So if you'd click the, the plates, um, you hear like a, a rattling sound and maybe it shakes. Like a little clink. Yeah. yeah. If you click the the plants, it, the, the leaves would rustle and maybe some leaf particles would pop out. Um, unfortunately, it would be something that would be predominantly felt when using mouse and keyboard. And we also support controller. But even yeah. then, I, th yeah, I think it would add a ton of like game feel to the game. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is low in the priority list. Steam remote play. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we go. Maybe we will have online multiplayer, some form of. That would be so fun. Yeah. And I think we'll, we'll also do, we'll also do family sharing. I don't know exactly how that system works, but maybe it could allow you to buy the game once and then play with people in your family through oh, remote yeah. play, maybe? Maybe only one person can run it at a time though. I don't know. Cat Cafe, it takes two edition. <laughs> that was so fun, it that was game. such a fun game. It takes two is a fantastic game. We had so much fun. Yeah. By the way, I need to build a Django app as my next project. You have inspired me to develop a project for for whiskers and coding. Cats, coffee, and co-working. I hope the assessors will like it. Nice. <laughs> it sounds great. That sounds really cool. That sounds awesome. Nice. <laughs> Make it a surprise. Let us discover that fun. Wait, what were we talking about? The, the clicking stuff? I may be completely behind on chat. I'm sorry. I am not even reading right now. I'm, s I'm fully focused. Mm. What do you think? I love it. It's beautiful. You guys like the plant? I really, I've been really wanting to draw a plant. <laughs> mm. I, I, ever since you drew the divider in the cafe, mm. um, part of me wants more lushness more. in the cafe as well. Yeah. Like maybe one of the decorations is like a, a wreath on the window or something. Maybe yeah. you can have like a, a hanging, uh, ivy thing on the pillars. I don't know. Yeah. Leaves like detail, yeah, for sure. We gotta add some some more details to the some more love to the leaves. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. <gasps> I love it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Tomatoes, how's it going? Hello. I know you announced the stream yesterday, uh, but didn't want didn't you want to send an alert today as well? Did we not send out an alert? 
Did I not? I thought I was responsible for that. You did not. <laughs> Wait! No! I never pressed enter. Yikes. That's rough. I apologize for this. That's rough. Alert time! <laughs> <laughs> Should I do it now? We have like 40 minutes left. Um, I almost feel like it's worse. Though okay, I don't. So you know what <laughs> happened? You know, so it was that confirmation. It was thing. the confirmation. So I pressed enter, and then I didn't press enter again to confirm that I wanted to alert everyone. That's my bad. I I, I meant to to double check. Um, that's okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That's rough. That was my oopsie. I'm really sorry. <laughs> How's it going, tomatoes? Thank you, thank you for letting us know. Thank you for pointing out my mistake. You would have never known if you hadn't said nothing. Oh, doing good, amazing. Love to hear that. A keck tomato. Keck tomato. You should add a monkey to the game. That would be quite a plot twist. Why would there be a monkey, though? What if we had a cat whose name is Monkey? Would that be confusing? It could. Listen, we all make mistakes. And the, the locker just, just sits there in the corner. I, I think it looks fine. And it makes I, sense for her coffee machine to be next to it. I I just don't know if I love the it sitting right up against the fridge. Right. I don't like. Right. I've decided I don't like it now that I see it properly. <clears throat> I don't love it there. Yeah, me neither. I'm like immediately no. What if... <laughs> What if we do the opposite? So the locker, oh, the locker is here. Yeah, well, I'll just have to mirror it because then it'll open. You won't see it. I guess it doesn't matter if you don't see it. No, I, I can uh, bring it around. I'm gonna have a cabinet doesn't fit. Yeah, you would have to not use that one. You'd have to use the one that's either open or... I'd have to make you a plain ah, one. What have I done? Um, I could use this one, is what you're saying, right? It might look better. You could do it like this. Anyway, we can fix it later. It's all good. Um, and then the coffee machine would sit here. And then the... Uh, the sprite is flipped like so. So it opens that way. I don't like that it covers the machine, the coffee machine actually. So maybe the coffee machine would sit next to the fridge. So you could still see a bit of it. I yeah. don't like it. You don't That's like fine. It. I think I, I think I need to sit down and properly look at it and think about um, a layout for it. Mm. You can also move the fridge. I think we have a in. lot of dead space. Um, here on the left. Yeah, because we we moved the microwave. It's now stacked, so we have more space here. Yeah. Would the locker make sense on that side or no? Hmm. It could work. Or what if you swap the fridge and the recipe book? Leave the locker where it is. Oh, 
also yeah. don't mind the counter. Hmm. A monkey named Cat. <laughs> Is the background brick texture a shader? No, I just drew some bricks. Yeah, it's just a sprite. Um, it's a sprite on a on a tile set. Uh, and then we have there's a couple different varieties, like there's the multicolored and like kind of uh, deteriorated bricks, and then there's some that are non deteriorated, and then it's just randomized. Yeah. Or what if you take the coffee machine and put it to the right, to the left of the oven? To the left of the oven. Yeah. Or do we want to save that space for something else? I think that the drinks you wanted the machine drinks will be, be here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, can you move? The avocado bowl to the shelf where some of those plates are. Mm -hmm. And then move some of those plates on top of the microwave. So this moves here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and the plates move here. That makes sense, right? To have the plates like on top of the microwave and stuff. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. Could order it chronologically from right to left. Food from the fridge, cook it, get coffee at the till. Yeah. So th that's actually one of the things I'm yeah because this coffee machine the idea with it is that it's olives like the, the the staff coffee machine that's why i always imagined it next to the yeah i mean locker. look we we there's always i know i don't like saying it but it could just go scrapped get scrapped in favor what? of the, the um, olives coffee machine right in favor of just you have we have the full coffee like barista set up with the drinks at the front if there's no room for, if there's no room for it that looks good yeah mm. but i i feel like it fits so well the the idea with this upgrade is that when you get olives coffee machine <clears throat> it extends the timer for your day i think that it makes so much sense and this looks so cute that I don't want to give it up. But the drinks, the, the, but the whole thing could do that too and serve as the drinks. Mm. Mm. I think it will just look better over there than cramped in between the fridge and the thing right now, at least. Mm. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it's The fridge looking... could move. Move here instead. Like you said, and then the, the book moves to the right. The fridge is a little more central. I don't mind the fridge right there. I think that looks cool. It creates this like cozy space in the middle. Yeah. Right. Fidgy Tani, when I'm in the cutest stress game competition and my opponent is Super Cat Cafe. <laughs> <laughs> Where did I put that book? No, I can't click it. It's behind the fridge. It's under the stones. Uh, recipe book. There it is. <laughs> Creep scope time. Player customizable cafe layout. Oh, oh ain't yeah. no way. That's actually... That has been mentioned before. Yeah. Um, I would shift the the, the coffee machine just a little bit to the left as well. Uh, yeah. I wouldn't trust a cafe that has a locker in the kitchen. Yeah, this that's, is that's true. why I wanted to put it like on the side. Yeah, you this know? is true. This is true. Damn it. I don't I don't mind it. Um, oh. Ah, 
Mm -hmm. What have I done? I'm in remote. What if it's a locker painted like a cat? <laughs> Does this mean that the cats can only run up to here now? Which is okay. Oh, because they can't use the... Unless they can walk behind the fridge, but... That, I wanted them to sauce. walk on top of the fridge. They could go on top of the fridge. Because that is very cat behavior. This is true. I want them to go on top of the fridge. Okay. Add some bloom with the world environment node. Yeah, we haven't <clears> touched <throat> the world environment at all. Um, absolutely. We're going to be playing around with that. Mm -hmm. um, also, right now... Um, because you can customize the the background of, of the cafe, sometimes, like, certain colors with the background will work better than others in terms of highlighting the ingredients that are falling in front of it. And on top mm -hmm. of that, the more you buy uh, for the cafe, so you, like, start filling up the shelves and stuff, mm -hmm. the more co colorful the background becomes, which makes it harder to see the ingredients. So another thing I wanted to do is to... Like when, dim the lights. And yeah, away. when you open the cafe, only the background dims a little bit or, or like loses saturation or something. Uh, I think we can achieve that with the yeah. uh, world in, uh, environment node as well and like oh my god for the vip modes i have like a final boss stage light in <laughs> yeah, mind yeah. yeah if we can make that work that would be amazing mm -hmm. <laughs> the old color theory fun times yeah, yeah. exactly that yeah because the ultimate goal is that by the end of the mm -hmm. game the shelves are going to be not like completely full but pretty stacked yeah so there's going to be a lot going on This is also going to be cat furniture and, you know, the little scratchers, all that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Cat tree somewhere in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at the laser route of sticking with pastel colors for the back wall and keeping a darker outline for the ingredients. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, we only have three, three decoration sets. Mm-hmm. I'm working on a fourth one. Yeah. Uh, and then we will probably have another a couple a couple more for release. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, right now we're we are picking the color of the wall to highlight the the ingredients. The problem yeah. is all the items that you do on top of the wall also will need to be hidden a little bit. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so sorry, Captain Anosa. Oh, I didn't see that uh, question. All the art in this game is brimming with personality and feels cozy. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. And about about that Sphinx. About that f Sphinx cat. Oh, yeah. And then they also said, fitting of a cafe, the colors go well together. Do you follow a specific palette or just kind of wing it? I completely wing it, but then once I... Oh, the two beans. Flash. <laughs> Add some blue. Um, I do just wing it with the colors, but I do work in like a sort of color palette within a set. So like every set is different. I just wing it for the vibe. But then once I'm happy with the color of like a main piece of it, then I will make um, everything that's like that color or like that material the same swatches, if that makes sense. Right. Chicken leg pose is a classic. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> this one's got some toe beans. And this is going to be Prince. This is, it's called Prince. Yeah. It, it, right now it'll be the, the one and only cat that's <laughs> not based off of a real pet. But... We really wanted a, a a Sphinx cat, 
So. Yeah. <laughs> Unless someone rolls around and they have they have that kind of cat, it is what it is. He said it is what it is. Do you have a Cornish Rex yet? No. I don't know that one. That's the one that we saw that had like that looked like a dinosaur. <laughs> Not like a dinosaur. What? That had like they had the fangs. What? No, am I wrong? Oh yeah, with the massive ears. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That we saw the, the video one we saw on TikTok. The, that was doing the thing with the teeth in the video. Yeah, yeah. they look crazy. Look at the size of those ears. <laughs> They're so interesting. Look at this one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one we saw. <laughs> the teeth. <laughs> Demon imp from hell. Oh, I, I think love it's it. cute. They are cute. They're imaginably cute. I like it. We were talking about it earlier and I was like, oh. I I don't want I don't want just one. I want five or ten. <laughs> And they can be my my Your minions, my minions. evil minions. <laughs> <laughs> evil minions. <sighs> I have one absolutely named Poutine. He will not shut up. <laughs> Always get sumis too. Must climb all the things. Poutine. We might need more than more than more space than what we've got for yeah. one of those then. Add some bloom. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, I hold. I'm going. I was going to commit. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Added locker. Sure. <laughs> Bullied into adding bloom. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I I do want to play around with that for sure. Um, not. Why not? Let's do it. So I'm just going to. <laughs> why not? Throw one in here. Just throw a bloom in there. It is a world environment. Um, game sprites. Yeah. Never used one before. To have any visible effect, it requires its environment property to contain an environment. Okay. So we're going to create a new environment. I assume that we can run the game and change it after the fact. Um, Sarah Sherry Bloom, go with a bit of 2D lights, maybe even a, a day night cycle. Yeah, again, completely agree. We, we, we need to explore that. Yeah, we have not explored lighting of any, of yeah. any type right now. It could really elevate the, the visual yeah. aspect of the game. And we kind of already have a day night cycle yeah. that, that happens on the, on the window above. It could just be a lot more pronounced. Yeah. Yeah. And it may be on, on day, the majority of the light is coming from there. And then as it turns night, the light sources start to come from the, the different lamps. <clears throat> Nothing happened. Everything's uh, it could be. It could be very cool. Not something we've played around with. Yeah, no, yet. but I, I agree. It could look really awesome. Um. Yeah, so we have things. I don't know how any of this works. What are we doing? Camera attributes. Exposure. Change the background to canvas option and then enable glow. Canvas. Then enable glow. Oh! <laughs> what? I think I may have gone a little, oh! a little too hard on that. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. Ship it. Yeah. We made it. Triple A title. <laughs> <laughs> Triple A title. <laughs> what else do you need, right? Yeah, I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, really, I need to 
There's a there's a thing. Wait, hold up. There's a thing. Oh. Okay. Isn't there like uh always on top, there we go. If I turn that on and I run the game. Now we can there we go. So yeah, it, it just feels like Um, I don't even know what term to use here. I'm sure there are really cool things you can do. With this, I just have no experience messing around with these. That's okay. You no, know, um, there, there will be time for that. Yeah, but we'll definitely explore it. Yeah. Do -do 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 -do. You do better with hand paint. Yeah, yeah. You need to set a threshold for what colors give glow or not. Right. Yeah. But there's so much you can do with this. Um... Like, maybe in camera as well, you can do... You do stuff. I, I think I need to watch a... A video. I think that. at least you gotta watch, like, one video. Because you can also mess with, uh, saturation and, and things like that, I'm pretty sure. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know what any of these things mean depth of field <laughs> do -do 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 adjustments there we go <laughs> stop breaking the game olive got into the catnip <laughs> no that's how maka sees the world Like, we could do some effects, like when you go into zoomies. Oh. Suddenly the yeah. saturation, like. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It could add to the effect, I right? I think that could be really fun. Yeah. Fog. God, there's so many options. It's crazy. Anyway. We will definitely be playing around with this. Um, but for the moment. We'll just let um, Celine's art shine. Oh, thanks. Well, we'll always have let your art shine. The point is to oh, decide thanks. if we want to make any adjustments <laughs> without <laughs> without <laughs> impacting your art. The zoomies give you hyper sight. <laughs> we do have to be careful here. The zoomies are purely behavioral. For the cats, there are no substances whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> it was a blue man dancing on your fridge. What? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> Most of the options are for 3D. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I, I really think with with lighting we could we could do some very cool stuff, especially if there were also lamps like yeah. on the shelves or something. Um, gotta add some lamps. Yeah, it could be real nice. Ooh. Uh, alrighty. Where's this? Bum, bum. 
What's he doing? <gasps> He's exposing my... Work smarter, not harder, guys. If <laughs> I just drew a couple flowers and now I'm just copy pastaing them. Oh, nice. That's what I do with my code. I mean, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Say what now? Is there an option to cook the cat? There are no cooking of cats. What? That would that would be a, a resounding no. Why would you want to do that? My dog also does zoomies every time we're in the garden. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Probably pasting code is not cool. <laughs> I mean, I agree. What? I agree. But you know what else I love? Just time. Just adding time. <laughs> just adding stuff. Quickly. It's great. You gotta you gotta make decisions. You wouldn't copy a Stack Overflow answer. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't download a car. Time, yes. Time. There's another ingredient. <laughs> Time. I'd say I've gotten pretty far with this plant in one day. Yeah, it, it looks fantastic. I love it. Yeah, I need to do all the leaks and stuff. Mm. I think I've gotten pretty. I got you, Algo. I, I knew what you meant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, like the the anti pirating ads. It's a it's an ongoing joke in our stream. We love we love to do it. Do what? Sorry. The the you wouldn't download. Oh yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just ingrained in our brains yeah, forever. It's just part of our <laughs> brain chemistry. Oh, <clears throat> no one saw that. Vanard, thank you. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. Again, if you have any questions, we're probably going to be calling it soonish, probably like 15 minutes or so. Yeah. If you have any questions about the project, about the process, like I said, we've, we've, not released our first game yet but we're very much on the road to do that um yeah if you have any questions about steam uh anything like that feel free to ask um and yeah, yeah. we are we're two nerdy nerds mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wish list by the demo <laughs> wish list by the demo <laughs> yeah Wait, you, no don't buy the demo if you enjoyed hanging out Try with us the demo uh, if you enjoyed hanging out, we, we do stream on weekends and on Tuesdays, uh, like today, but in, in a slightly different schedule. Yeah, we would be starting uh, yeah, yeah, like soonish, soon, yeah. Yeah, yeah, typically, but we won't, we won't today. Cause... <laughs> you stream? <laughs> what? But yeah, if you enjoyed hanging out, feel free to drop us a follow. Um, and yeah, the, the project we've been working on today uh, has been super... Cat Cafe, uh, which you can we, you can try out, you yeah. can wish list it or not, you know, up to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. <clears throat> it's been so fun hanging out here today. Mm -hmm, it's been mm -hmm. so good. I had a good time. Drop y'all a follow on the main. Appreciate all your insight. Talk to the wife, and she equally agreed with some concerns. Hope to see y'all on again soon. Thank you nice. so good much for stopping by, and you know, I I, I really hope that. You get to enjoy the game making and mm -hmm. yeah, get to experience that. Yeah, it is, it is a long road, but it is so satisfying to create a video game. It is wild. Yeah. Um, it's addicting. <laughs> it's addicting. <laughs> yeah. You wouldn't follow some two nerdy you nerds. You wouldn't follow two nerdy nerds. <laughs> you download a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> download a nerd. Uh, let me tell you, our, our streams are usually... They get pretty derailed and unhinged. That's and, true. And very noisy. You will probably have a slightly different experience. They're very loud. 
if you check us out on on our channel. <laughs> but it's a fun time. I promise you that. Yeah, everyone's super super fun. Wish listed didn't realize it was already on Steam. Nice, thank, thank you. you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. The demo is on Steam, and don't listen it to is what free. some of these nerds yeah. say. It is a free demo. <laughs> it is free. Always a good time with the nerds. Thank you, Solar. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> I would <laughs> download a nerd, though. <laughs> <laughs> How do you know when you're ready, have enough skills to accomplish a game idea you have? Honestly, we really just started because we thought it would be fun yep. and nothing else. We the, the only skills that we knew we had is that you know how to program, you know, programming mm -hmm. as like a cuz that's what you do. Yeah. You know, you not necessarily like the the exact language at the time you didn't know yeah. good GD script, but yeah. you, you know, you have a grasp of programming and such and, and I just know how to draw. Uh, as far as skills went, like I know how to mm. draw. I draw stuff digitally sometimes. Yeah, um, it's it's yeah. not something. It's, it's something that you have to feel out. You can't just like add up, look, connect the dots, add up the math, and then and then you know if you can make something. If you haven't done a game, I would beg of you to start with something crazy simple we, we're, we're we, talking like real simple we started yeah. with a vampire survivors clone yeah basically we can we because, can pull it up here because we fell in love with that game we played it we spent almost like a sleepless night just playing that game just having so much fun yeah and we thought maybe we could do our own you know maybe because yeah. we had ideas for like how like wouldn't it be so funny if you had this and if you mm -hmm. had that and so we then thought like what if for the lols we tried to do it just for just to have a laugh you know with no expectations with no intention of ever showing it to anyone just for us because we thought it could be fun yeah and we got i mean we overscoped it to an impossible mess but we <laughs> yeah. had a lot of fun doing it we had the just the thrill of it coming together and being something relatively playable mm -hmm. gave us just that ful fulfillment and that kind of nudge of like oh shit like game development is fun yeah you know we have all the control <laughs> and that's that's why we talk a lot about this um in our stream is that you have to maximize motivation that that for me that has become my mantra is that if you're not planning your not just your one project but your game dev journey to maximize motivation you, you're gonna hit a wall and then you're not gonna have the the strength to go over it yeah or through it or whatever you want to deal with this hypothetical wall um <laughs> Um, so if you start your journey with a crazy, you know, you have this game idea, you really want to do it and you start with that and you, you don't have the know-how to execute it. All you're going to do is set yourself up to, to fail and then you're not going to have the motivation to keep going. Yeah. But also right. it's okay to fail. It's okay and, and to fail. And in this case with this project that you're seeing right now, we failed. As we in, failed, like, yeah. we abandoned it. Yeah. It's on the Opera GX thing, but it's it's by no means... It's not a finished game. It's kind of broken. Yeah. It, Got, will, it will crash. It will crash. <laughs> it will break. Um, but it was a huge lesson. And and that doesn't And we learned mean, a ton. And we learned so much from it. And, and again, it's okay to fail. You will most likely fail on your first project. I feel like I feel like that for yep. everything on the first try that you do, you will fail. But it's yep. okay because we learn so much. And then it doesn't mean that that idea that you had will never come to pass. You mm -hmm. can just put it to the side and be like, okay, that was like a bit much. We're gonna just leave that. <laughs> just gonna leave that over there. Um, we're gonna do something a little bit more streamlined, a little bit more accessible. Yeah. But it doesn't mean that we will like never come back to something like this. In fact, our game jam 
Dr. J. Ferret is also in this kind of style of game. Yeah. But we did it completely different. Yeah. And that will be our next commercial game. Yeah. So th this was our first one. And then in between these games, we had other um, other failures that never made it into anything real. Yeah. Um, and then on in January, we participated in the Pirate Software Game Jam and we made this game. Yeah. Um, Is the cheese bug still in the game? <laughs> Cheese the che bug. Oh, the the too much cheese. Uh, <laughs> a lot of people don't like the too much cheese. Yeah, I get it. Or the too much um, bacon, you know. And from from that first game, we we didn't earn anything because it's not a complete game. It's just a a little bit of fun we just put up online. Yeah. And this is our game jam game. Mhm. Mm and this will be our next commercial project. Yeah, which um, I'm very much of the idea that I want to start from scratch but yeah yeah we're definitely starting from scratch we will probably be exploring uh 2.5d so a 3d world but with 2d assets yeah. um to basically we want to try and make the visual style as unique as possible yeah um yeah game is cute you're glad I'm glad you guys are coming back to it eventually oh yeah this is 2025, it'll be Dr. J. Ferret's turn. That's right. That's right. Um, I'm thinking of, uh, I'm going to redo the comics. I'm going to make some very, very nice looking comics. Nice. Very nice. No rogue pixels in my new fancy comic. Should I, should I, <laughs> should I bring the intro back? <laughs> no! <laughs> <laughs> so we can, we can play uh, Spot the Rogue Pixel. First game that I made still haunts me till today, <laughs> and that's okay. It's a lesson learned. My first game was called um, Cube Runner, from that one Bracky's video. <laughs> nice, that's nice. awesome. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, doing simpler games, even if you're copying another game that you love, um, you know, Pong, Mario, Breakout, Tetris, whatever, you're gonna learn so much. Um, that things just start to add up and then there will come a time where not only you've gained that essential knowledge of the basics of the engine you will also have learned how to get yourself unstuck right running into a wall and figuring out how to find a solution to a uh, coding problem or whatever that is a skill that you'll continuously get better at um so just keep at it and then there'll come a time where you you'll be comfortable with running into a wall and you know knowing to go what to search on google um you know know what you'll probably get out of reddit versus the godot forum versus whatever like you will start to create this map in your head yeah. on how to get through a challenge and then you're just yeah you're just gonna be more and more comfortable with it <laughs> Love the art in this. Thank you. Thank you. I did have a lot of fun with this and mm. I am excited to as much as I am enjoying the pixel art style I am very much looking forward to um, Flexing the just regular yeah. digital 2D yeah. art the, the illustration. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. illustration <laughs> My first game is still not finished. Flavius our first game is still not finished. Yeah, yeah, we're not, we're not done. <laughs> we're not done yet. <laughs> we needed to do a lot, actually. We just have a demo. <laughs> the voices want me to buy a fart. I must buy a fart. What? I must buy a fart. Oh, no. <laughs> uh. Yeah, so we, we did... How much is the demo? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we made this game in two weeks, but then this is the danger of game jams. I think we worked on it for another month. Yeah. Before we went back to the cat cafe. We just loved it. Oh, I messed up. We just loved it so much. It was just too fun. We just kept working on it. And we added a. I put so many polish. zombie games, zombie movie references in this. Yeah. It's. it's a lot it's good we might need to tone them down for a commercial Maybe game there, might be, there may or may not be some legal 
<laughs> issues here. I think um, the um, the Simon zombie is probably fine. Yeah. <laughs> you can't own white shirts and red ties. <laughs> yeah. How can I buy the demo? You can play the demo on Steam. Mm -hmm. And, and if you want to play this game, it's on, over on Itch. Uh, so you can do oh, that. Oh, yeah. If you want to play what you're seeing right now, it's on it's on our Itch page. Yeah. That's just uh, two nerdy nerds .itch .io. Yeah. Add a bucket head zombie. Ooh. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Um, yeah, sorry, I'm just playing the game now. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, I'm just having a good time. Yeah. Um, what do you do if you don't have time to work and need oh, money, f money fast? That is more tricky. I mean, everyone's situation is, is different, right? But you, you've got to be able to, first of all, take care of yourself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, it, it, let me just interject here and say that if you're looking for money fast... I would recommend that you stay away from game dev as much as possible because that's not a thing. <laughs> game dev and fast are not compatible words in any stretch. <laughs> Pirates, door dash, no. Good door engine uh, is back. It's checking in on us. How is yes. everyone? We're done. We're doing good. We've had such a great, great time. Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. Thank you so much for everyone that, <laughs> that was hanging out today. Uh, game dev <laughs> and money? <laughs> Question mark. Yeah, they're not. They're not. They're not real. <laughs> I would say game dev and passion. You know. Yeah, I like that. I like game that. dev and passion. So just talk to your landlord and see if they take passion. <laughs> <laughs> would you accept passion and alpha access? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> it should like to play our game. Uh, <laughs> Alrighty. I think uh, we'll be going for four hours. I think that has been us. I think that has been nerds. our takeover. Yeah. Pay him in Steam keys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Will your landlord take Steam keys? Yeah. <laughs> well, we need to finish the game. In that, we in that do game. need to finish the game before we have Steam keys. Um, <laughs> I believe we we'll, we will be raiding out. Ooh, we're raiding um, out. The the Godowski mentioned that they would take suggestions. I don't know if you have a, a target in mind already. Mm. Um, Jackie Code says goobs. First things first. Oh, pirate software. Aramis. We, we will be, of course, raiding into a Godot stream. Naturally. Small streamers, y'all. <laughs> I, think, I think Thor is doing all right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll be all right. Let's see. I mean, there's, there's, there's infinite options here. Mm -mm. I see Connie is live. Yeah, Connie. We could maybe do Connie. Let me go live real quick. <laughs> Honey is working on their... Okay. No, we got one. We're do good. You, do you have devlogs on YouTube? We post um, pretty much all of our streams, right? Well, I'll let you say how many yeah, there are. But yeah, we, 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 we post our streams on there. We do want to start working on devlogs. Yeah, we don't have like a like a edited cut yeah. devlog. Like our streams are mm -hmm. devlogs because that is when yeah. we work on the game. Yeah, I don't think we'll ever do like um uh like on a schedule type mm. thing. If we do devlogs, it will be very much spur of the moment. Let's work on a video if we have something interesting to show, mm. but that's about it. Uh, trust me, or do you want to choose? No, all good. Um, whatever trust. whatever you want to do. <laughs> yeah, we, we trust. In Godot, we trust. In Godot, we trust. I actually, I want a shirt. <laughs> I want a shirt with that. Yeah. Can I get a shirt with that? Can we get a, can we get Godot marketing on that? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for that plushie. Yeah, the plushie is coming. I, I believe in October or November. We can put him up where my my dinosaur is. Yeah, he can yeah. just hang out back there you in go. the background. So do you mean me? Dang. <laughs> <laughs> More work. <laughs> Come on, Nat. Come on. 
<laughs> just dropped you guys to follow. Love your vibe. Thank you so much, Thank you very DJ. Much. Yeah, we'll be back on, on Saturday. That's right. Um, same time as this stream was. Same time. Yep. I think... That is that. It's time. We have a right target. Go. It's been super fun. I'm not going to lie. I was nervous. I hope I was able to shed some light on on the process if you are interested in diving deeper into game dev. Yeah. Thank um, you. Thank you all so much for joining us today. It has been such a blast, honestly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And uh, thank you as well to Godot for having us. Yeah. Thank you to Godot. Thank you very much, Godot. Um... We don't, we don't have all the sounds that we usually have here. <laughs> we don't have all the gimmicks. <laughs> but like something would happen and then it would go like, thank you so much, Godot. Job well done. No, well, <laughs> thank you, thank you, Godot. Wow, congratulations. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> oh, we're, and we're out. We, okay. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs>